Hello everybody, my name is Dizzy, and welcome one and all to something that, I won't lie, I'm kind of nervous about, uh, because today I'm going to be hopefully treating you all to uh, a little bit of Pokemon Coliseum, aka the best Pokemon game, uh, because I do love it so, so much. Uh, goodness gracious me, let me uh, get this started for you. Oh, uh, yeah, I, so as you all probably know, I've played, uh, a little bit of Pokemon before on the channel. I did Pokemon Y, my first ever complete playthrough of Pokemon Y. Uh, I've even done, a long time ago, a very little bit of a, a Pokemon Coliseum randomizer on the channel, just for, I think, a single episode. Oh, that music, though. I, I, if you've never experienced any of the Pokemon GameCube games, you are in for a treat, because if nothing else, the sound on these games, I absolutely adore to pieces. Uh, but yeah, so this game was a, a fairly sizable portion of my childhood. Uh, I used to play it on me old GameCube, and then when I got a Wii, and you could play GameCube games on the Wii, I played it on my Wii too. So uh, this and the sequel, XD Gale of Darkness, I have... I, I mean, I cannot possibly say how many hours they have in them, because much of that will be lost to time. Uh, but yeah, and today, because I've played through the game a million times, and it doesn't have too many surprises left for me, in theory, I'm touching all of the wood right now, uh, I thought, well, I either wanted to, to run through it as a randomizer, or as a Nuzlocke, and I asked chat, and the chat said, uh, we'd love to see a Nuzlocke. So, it's gonna be hard. Uh, it's gonna be really hard. Uh, like, this is not a, a trivial game. <laughs> Laughing face scale of darkness. Yeah! 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 I... I... It makes it awkward to, to actually type about sometimes. I have immediately pushed the wrong thing. Uh, ba 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 Can I... <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> One second, I've immediately done something wrong. And now you can see how disjointed my background is so that it stretches out to fit behind the thing. Uh, I think I pushed the continue button when I meant to, to push the new game button, is, uh, is what the problem was there. But uh, tabbing out only made it worse. <laughs> Good start, we're off to a great start. We're off to a wonderful start. Um. While we're going on, I guess I'll explain the rules of a Nuzlocke to anybody who is unfamiliar with them and watching. Uh, the idea of a Nuzlocke is it's sort of like a, an optional set of hard mode rules for Pokemon games. And for Pokemon-like games, sometimes. Sorry, it's actually quite loud in my ears. Uh, I hope it's not too loud for you guys. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so the, the idea of Nuzlocke is that you have to do fulfill a few things. Uh, the first thing is that you don't get to choose which Pokémon you catch and use. You are only allowed to catch the first Pokémon you see in every area. Now normally in, in a Pokémon game this would be the first Pokémon in every route, and then you, sometimes in cities you can encounter Pokémon, and then additionally on top of that you're also sometimes gifted Pokémon. Uh, and when that says the first Pokémon, that is the first individual Pokémon. Uh, so no duplicates, or in the case of Colosseum, what that means is that uh, if I knock out a Pokémon that I could get it again later in the game, it won't count. Uh, it won't count as the same Pokémon. Uh, which is scary and terrifying. Uh, the second rule of Nuzlocke uh, is that if a Pokémon faints, it is considered, quote, dead. You can't use it anymore. It is it is gone from your game. Uh, and in the classic days, what you were supposed to do was release them. But uh, I don't have the stomach for that. Most people don't. So nowadays it is traditional to put them in a, just a, a dedicated box in your PC for, quote, unquote, dead Pokemon. Uh, the final thing that we will be doing as soon as we have access to it, uh, which we won't from the beginning of the game, uh, but is that you have to nickname all of your Pokémon. And I will definitely be looking to chat 
Uh, if any chatters wish to lend names to any of the Pokemon we catch, then uh, those will be up for grabs. Uh, oh my gosh, yeah, so look, there we go. I pushed the continue button, not the new game button. So yeah, Colosseum is, is kind of an interesting bunny to, to Nuzlocke. I've got to remember what I set up all of my buttons to be. Okay, that's X. <laughs> That's probably fine. We won't need them in like a pinch. This is a game. This is not like a time sensitive game. There's no uh, quick time events or anything. Uh, we're going to go with Dizzy, not Dis, I think. Uh, but yeah, so Coliseum is, a, is a, a tricky game to Nuzlocke for a few reasons. Uh, mostly because the Pokemon that you encounter are quite few in number. Uh, Boom says, I'm glad to know we're just lending the names and you'll get them back. <laughs> of course, uh, at any time. Uh, this is some sort of fey esque bargain, I suppose. But I mean, there's a name rater. If you need a name back at any point, I can always go and change it back to or, or, or get a name of someone else to replace it. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I also I realized I've just paused on the screen that says is Dizzy okay? And although I'm okay now, I'm sure I won't be by the end of the run. Uh but yeah, so Colosseum is, is, is difficult to know look for a few reasons. One is the number of Pokemon, the physical number of encounters, the number of areas, uh are very small. Uh, if if I were to consider this as like a traditional Pokemon game. There are maybe five or six uh, areas where you'd get encounters. Now, because that's uh, unbelievably low, uh, the traditional way of doing things to Colosseum is you take uh, all of the subdivisions of an area that you will see on the Pokémon's uh, Met at screen. So every Pokémon in its summary, it'll tell you where you got it. So every different location in the Met at screen uh, will count as a new area, and in some cases that will lead to some slightly unintuitive places counting as different areas and allowing me to get different Pokemon. Uh, but it will definitely be worth it so that I'm not left with only like five people and my starters at the end. Uh, the other thing that makes Colosseum funky to Nuzlocke is that uh, it's all double battles. And double battles can be pretty swingy. Uh, because, you know, the enemy has the ability to team up on one of your Pokémon if it's looking slightly weak. Uh, and some of the enemies will do that. Some of the enemies, their AI is, like, completely random chance, but some of the enemies uh, are programmed with enough logic and sense to capitalize on the Pokémon that they know they can kill this turn. And they will go in for the killing blow. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty rough out there. I suppose Perhaps also the third thing that I might say makes Colosseum unusual to Nuzlocke is that uh, in most Pokemon games, on most routes, you have a random chance of encountering certain Pokemon as your first encounter, and hence the one that you're allowed to catch for that area. Uh, and with good manipulation and, and encountering things in the correct orders, or using stuff like your fishing rod or your surfing to make sure you're in drawing encounters from different pools, you can manipulate that to get better encounters for yourself. Uh, Colosseum is not like that. Every encounter in Colosseum where you can catch Pokemon is fixed. Uh, you, you can only ever catch one specific Pokemon with one specific moveset uh, at one specific level in an in individual place. And most of the time, for most of the locations we'll be going to, the order that we encounter those in is also fixed, so there is no choice involved. Now, normally when, when someone is Nuzlocke in Colosseum, they sort of look at this and they say, well, okay, what we do is we uh, implement a new rule that says, instead of picking the first one we come to, it instead uh, pick a random one out of the pool of all encounters in a certain area. But because this is my first Colosseum Nuzlocke, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to take the first one that we come to each time and grin and bear it when it's something like a Yanma. Uh, it will be a Yanma for one of the areas. <laughs> uh, and that's going to be harsh sometimes. Uh, there are a few places where we will have choice and we will have actual choice choice uh, between which Pokemon we get. Uh, and those areas are going to be our saving bacon. Honestly, 
saving bacon, saving grace, or they will save my bacon, one of the two. They will not be our saving bacon. They will not be holy pork flesh descending from on high uh, to save us. <laughs> uh, I'm stalling because I'm nervous, uh, but I'm going to hit the yes button and we're going to see the opening cutscene, which is awesome. Like, if you're not sold on the game by the end of the opening cutscene, then there's nothing I can do for you. Uh... I might put this up a little bit for you, because the music is a big part of the experience of the game. Uh oh, pausing. <laughs> That's us. That's me. Big smile. I actually, I mustn't, because I will sing along to every single piece of music in the entire game, and that's not viable. So yeah, that's us. We got a cool bike. We got an Espeon and an Umbreon to start with. Uh, these games are the reason why I love Espeon and Umbreon and Evolutions more generally. Uh, I don't think... I, I don't know why everyone else in the world loves them, because nobody else really knows this game, it seems. Uh, but this is why I love them. Uh, and Espion and Umbreon, our starters, will be huge important parts of our of our Nuzlocke run, because they are super good. Uh, and yeah, we, we drive across the desert and we wind up here. There's no camera control. Uh, you just sort of walk around. Uh, if we try and leave... Uh, we will see that instead of going to like a route or something from a traditional Pokemon game, we just have a world map uh, with one place that we can go to, which is where we're already at. This is Outskirts Stand. Actually, I should have read the description. Uh, a lonely gasoline stand in a desolate desert, as opposed to all of those very like abundant and lush deserts. Uh, travelers visit it on their journey, so I don't know why, because I can't figure out where it goes. Like, apparently we're on a road, according to this map, through the desert. It's not a lot of a road, but apparently we're on one. I also actually have never really looked at this map screen too heavily before, because... If you know where to look, there's features on this map that tell you, like, stuff that you'll see later in the game. And I'd never noticed that before. That's really cool. Anyway. So, here we are. The only place we can go. Uh, Boomer says, it's special station, you're wondering why people go there. I'm wondering why people go here when we are out in the middle of the desert. <laughs> you know, if you had to drive 50 miles out of town into a desert to get petrol, I feel like you, you wouldn't go there to get petrol. I feel like you'd buy a jerry can. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we got, a, we got this little sort of a hover van or is replete with hover vehicle technology and also old trains. Maybe the trains were made obsolete by the hover vehicle technology, I don't know. Oh, oh, two characters, brightly dressed. Love chowing down after a job, as to the flavour. We bagged ourselves a great big catch too, presumably that's the, uh, the big old bag in the back of their van. Doesn't get any better than this. Oh, oh, guys. Oh, my sweet summer children. <laughs> what you don't yet know cannot hurt you. Except it can, because it's me. Um, so yeah, that was nice, I suppose. Let's go inside, have a look. Authorities have made a stunning announcement on the mysterious building that exploded in Echo Canyon. You look in the background, that's where we just were. It was Team Snagum's hideout. There are a gang of Pokemon abductors who have already been marked for arrest. The hideout was discovered only because of the explosion. And by the time police arrived, everyone had already gone. The cause of the explosion is under investigation. It should become apparent eventually. So, we're on the news. Or at least our... A result of our actions is on the news. Do you know about Team Snagum? No, tell me, sir. The aspect ratio just changed. Oh, that is interesting. The aspect ratio did just change. 
What's up with that? Uh, ha! Huh. <laughs> excuse, excuse, excuse me a second. Get game. What? <laughs> the aspect ratio is different between the interior and the exterior. What? I okay. Um, <clears throat> this is going to require some slight changes to the setup because I I made my setup specifically having tested it. The entire start of the game is in narrow aspect ratio. I made my entire setup after that. Ah. Uh, ah. <clears throat> Newsreader really wanted to be a wide girl. I guess. Uh Hang on, I know what I'm going to do. Did it by me, just mucking it about. My mucking about is not going well. Oh, OBS, why do you do this to me? I guess we're just gonna gonna have it in 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 full screen mode, and then when there's black on the edge of the screen, we just got black on the edge of the screen. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, I didn't notice that at all during testing. Let's just move a little dizzy around. Anyway, uh, yeah, I stepped outside briefly to check uh, what's going on, and I've accidentally triggered the next bit of the game, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, so as we step outside. Who's this guy with pink hair? He's called Willy. And he wants to battle. But apparently I'm not an ordinary Joe. It's because my name isn't Joe. Uh, and so we get into the, the first battle of the game, uh, which I guess for a lot of people playing this will be like the introduction to the concept of, oh hey, it's double battles only. It's really weird, the aspect ratio shift. I don't know what, what caused that. <laughs> uh, also, our first chance to uh, enjoy the amazing battle theme that this game has. It's it's truly wonderful. Uh, yeah, so we have an Umbreon and Espeon. Uh, unusual features, they're starting out not at level 5. Uh, they're not even starting out at the same level, they're starting out with some experience. I, I, I really like how it sort of makes... <laughs> That's nice HP. I, I hadn't noticed that. <laughs> um, I don't know what is a good or a bad like HP value for your Pokemon, because uh, because we're starting out at moderate level, you can work out what your like IVs and whatever are. I, I don't know what they are, I'm not planning to look them up. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so it was something slightly weird. Uh, because I happen to know enough about this fight, I'm gonna actually start off with a taunt. Uh, because I know that Espeon can one-shot both of these with confusion. Uh, so I know I don't need to waste a bite on a, on a Zigzagoon. Espeon is going to be the hard hitter of the team for pretty much the entire game. Uh, Umbreon is nice because he's tanky, but tanking in a double battle doesn't work tremendously well. Uh, I 
I guess I might as well give it a secret power just on the off chance that Confusion somehow does not one shot. Uh, but it's a, it's a bit of a problem for those of us who love their starters equally when the game is very much like ESPION all capitals and then like 12 point font underneath brackets and Unreal. Anyway, one fight down. Uh, some Nuzlockers say that the Nuzlocke rules don't apply till after you get your first Pokeballs. I tend to say that only the catching rule doesn't apply until you get your first Pokeballs. So uh, if by some horrendous twist of fate uh, someone dies early, we're, then we're in real trouble. Uh, yep, yep, that's you got his name right, Boom Boom. It was the early 2000s. It was the more innocent time. Do the real number on us. One that puts your skills in Fenac City. It's out west of here. You'll find trainers who are way better than me there. Sure. Uh, do you have anything else to say? I'm just tell me where to go. Um, yeah, so if I now head out, you'll see that basically you unlock new areas to go when somebody tells you about them. Uh, I'm going to have a quickie check inside first. I don't think I can rematch you. No, okay. Uh, but yeah, because I didn't actually speak to any of the people inside, really. Uh, this guy was going to tell me about Team Snagum. You're a bunch of heartless crooks. Oh, okay, the aspect ratio hasn't changed this time. Is it just the TV screen that does that? What? What? <laughs> I object! I object most strenuously. Uh... I cannot, I cannot overstate my objection. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm gonna see if I can, because when it zoomed in onto the TV it changed. Okay, interesting. Maybe I'll just have to, look, I want to get my nice background set up back, so that you're not just looking at black on the sides of the screen. So forgive me if I take just a sec to, uh, Jiggle it about. I apologize, this is taking a while, but OBS really doesn't want to play ball with me. For some reason. Pretty little dizzy to look at in the meantime. Yes, please do admire admire the art from the wonderful uh, Thalmoran who made my little PNG tube. Uh, I promise this will be worth it at the end. The, the chat window that was on screen unfortunately will have gone. I don't think there's any bringing that back. How does that look? Does that look better? There we go, we've got no black on the sides of the screen. Things are sort of roughly in the middle. Okay, apparently that's in the middle. There we are. Okay, wonderful. Um, wait, what, 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 sad? what did I say that was sad? Wait, what did I do? Oh no! Um. That is the background, the correctly ratioed game. Okay, wonderful. Everything is fine and lovely and dandy. No chat. Oh, no chat. Yeah, apologies. Um, I got rid of it in my haste because I thought I was working on a duplicate of the scene and I wasn't. And uh, look, I never claim to be a competent professional streamer. Um, so you won't unfortunately see yourself probably for the rest of today. 
Uh, but but uh, I hear they use something called a snag ball to catch Pokemon from their rightful trainer in battle. You know, that's a terrifying concept. Enemies who can steal Pokemon from a trainer. You best be careful, I will. Listen, pal, if you're intending to travel, you might want to stock up on supplies. Ah, yes, so. He is a shop. He will sell us just kind of like the very basics. Um. I don't think we need anything here. You get to be invisible for the rest of the night. Oh no, Phantom Boom Boom will be haunting us. Yeah, this isn't quite the centre, is it? Oh. Yeah, sorry. Being a perfectionist. Uh. Okay, we already have some of these, in fact, in the bag. We already have two of each of them, uh, which I had forgotten straight away. So let's have a look at what else we have. We already have some potions, which is going to be amazing. We have a full heal as well. Wonderful. Uh, those will be very, very, very important on our run. And in fact, you can see we also have a start menu. Uh, one thing noticeably missing from the start menu uh, is the save button. For whatever reason, Genius Sonority who made this game decided, and it's not a terrible decision, but they decided that you can only save at computers. Uh, so we are stuck out here in the wilderness plain until such time as uh, we find our first computer. Uh, but we can have a look at our Pokemon. Do -do -do, here's Umbreon. Interestingly, Umbreon. Ooh, oh, oh, God, oh no. <clears throat> Dolphin, why? Why do you do this to me? Thank you. Yeah, I need to unbind that. Hang on a sec. What is a button I'm never, ever, ever going to push? Uh... I'll find it to one of the function keys. Scroll lock is good. I don't think I actually have a scroll lock button. Sorry. Uh, my, my gamer instinct is that uh, escape will be like leave a menu. But of course, this is for a GameCube, which doesn't have that many buttons. So the B button is the leave menu button. Uh, and I'm not playing on controller because Dolphin doesn't actually really like. Uh, Switch Pro controllers, which is the kind of controller I have, uh, which is, was causing me problems back when I played uh, Double Dash. Anyway, so here's our here's our Umbreon. He's got some defense. He's got a special attack like half his special defense. You'll see Espeon is sort of has them swapped, which is why Espeon is such a hard hitter, uh, but why Umbreon is such a tank. He's also slow as anything. My goodness. Um, yes, yeah, so they have kind of similar attack stats, and then Umbreon has big special defense, big regular defense, and rubbish speed, whereas Espeon has poor defenses uh, and great speed. Uh, and you'll see that these guys are my old friend. That's where I met them, down at the bottom. Well, they're my old friends. Uh, uh, Umbreon is gentle, Espeon is rash, that seems about right. Uh, and we have some moves for each of them, and then ribbons, which I don't think you can get in this game. But they're there for compatibility with the Gen 3 games. Anyway, uh, we also, in our game, <clears throat> we also in our menu have a uh, a P star DA or a PDA. I don't know what the star is for. Um, we have a, a personal digital assistant from back when. You're killing me. <laughs> uh, from back when that was a thing. Uh, and you'll see that interestingly, we already have set up a snag list. We've not snagged anything. Uh, that's a bit of a spoiler, I guess. And we have an email. We have no emails. I'm gonna put you back to the version with the background. You're not going to change again. Do you understand the game? <laughs> okay, I will figure out what 
You feel like it changed immediately? Yeah. I feel like that it... We, it I, I'll work out what it is that causes that. Yep. Uh, anyway, there's there's more news. And then back, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, it was Team Snagum's hideout. Yeah, we know this bit. We've already seen this news. Go away. <laughs> It's definitely something to do with this room. I hope it's something to do with this room, because we won't be spending a lot of time in this room. Uh, we're visiting from Fenac City. It's a city of water in the middle of the desert. It's a very nice place. Uh, and then the strong. Oh my gosh, I think she's coming on to me. Uh, hang on. Yeah, okay. Ignore that. We've got a little jukebox here that doesn't work. Uh, lots of big old gears. And steam and stuff, which I don't really understand why they're moving, considering the train very much isn't. But anyway, uh, that is everything we're going to find here, basically. Uh, and off to Fenac City. A gorgeous jewel of a town that overflows with water in the middle of the desert. Uh, and with every new area, you get a lovely, grand sweeping view of the beautiful 3D scenes. Oh, it's these two guys. Get a grip. It won't stop squirming, makes it tough to hold. Settle down, just be quiet for a little while longer. Uh oh, kidnappers. Okay, so, there's a person in the bag. Uh. Ow, and then they just drop her, which is quite... It's quite the thump! I know it's not a long drop, but still. Uh, so yeah, they, we overheard them uh, unloading and, and being kidnappers, and so now they're gonna fight us. So this is Folly. Uh, he has two whispers. <laughs> you understand now the challenge is that it's a Nuzlocke, is that the aspect ratio is completely randomized. <laughs> <laughs> oh great. Um Okay. I will do my best to, to transition between the, the background and the not background version when it happens. I don't know why it happens. Uh yeah, so we got two weak old whispers. Uh once again I'm expecting these to be a problem. I'll go for the the slightly high level one first, but I'm expecting it to still be a one shot. We are equal level. But, uh, they are basic Pokémon, and we are not bad evolved Pokémon, so they don't stand a lot of a chance. Uh, uproar can be a little annoying. Uh, I realised I used Taunt last time, it is actually worth going for the bite, just on the off chance you get a crit and kill. I don't think the bite one Crit uh, actually one shots the Zigzagoon from last encounter. Uh, let's do a return. So Espion has return. It's got. It, it has an attack stat. Uh, this is before the uh, physical special split that happened in Gen 4. So actually, uh, whether a move uses my attack or my special attack is dependent on its type, not on what the move is. Uh, which is one of the things that will probably slip me up a few times. Anyway, Folly went down without uh, too much difficulty. I mean, his name literally is Folly. Uh, I'm no ordinary trainer. No, I am not. I'm a protagonist. And then, might you be Team Snagums? And then everyone comes over. Hello! <laughs> robbers! They're robbers! We're not robbers, we're kidnappers! <laughs> Alright, don't get all happy just on account of winning this once. The next time, I'll trash you. And then they run off into the desert. We're just in the middle of the desert and they just run off. Uh, anyway, yes, there's uh, someone inside there. Uh, of note, in this scene, if you look at the top of your screen, you'll see a little shadow going round and around. Uh, this running guy, he goes for a run with his Pokémon. And this Pokémon is just chilling, Just still doing laps of the fountain while he uh, 
he tries to untie this. Oh. You need your help? I think this guy's got it. No, okay, he hasn't got it. Da -da -da -da. Not gradually loosened. I, I also I feel like this comma is misplaced. Because it implies that I untied the knot, but I kept the sack's mouth closed after I untied the knot. Which <laughs> I'm just like, well, I've untied it, but uh, I'm not letting this person out. There we go. And this is uh, the person whose canon name is Rui. She will be our companion of sorts on this trip. Where did those two bring me? Uh, we're in Fenac City. The opulent city of water. I love how she has to say that in when she's telling someone where we are. <laughs> It'd be like if I said, "Where? well, where are you? Oh, well, you're in London. The grungy city of Big Ben. <laughs> this person saved you from those thugs. The way he battled those goons was truly superb. I wish you could have seen it. But you were in a bag. <laughs> uh, and yeah, we get to give her a name. Uh, I, you know, I genuinely can't remember what I used to call her back in the day. I'm sure I must have had like a name that I used, but I do not know what it was. Well, anyway, I am planning to just go with the uh. <laughs> Thanks, Boom Boom. <laughs> but if I ever play Sword and Shield, we'll have to remember that that quote is there. Uh, I'm gonna just go with Rui because it's what I know her as now. I should have um, actually uncapitalized it. Aspect ratio has changed, of course it has. <clears throat> I'm sure glad I met you. I was in a neighboring town when those two grabbed me. Did they use a peculiar Pokemon? Will they use a rubbish Pokemon? It's easy to see something's on your mind. You should go see our mayor for his advice. He's a very kindly person. I'm sure he'll be able to help you somehow. The mayor's house is near the Fountain Square past here. Go up the stairs from the square. It's on your left. Yes, we can escort you for a while. This... the stretched out version is very awkward to actually watch physically. I hope it's not too bad for you guys. With me, it won't matter if those guys come back. Thanks for joining me for a while. Remember those words for a while. But we have a friend. She will now follow me everywhere I go. The aspect ratio will fix itself this time. Uh, we can't talk to her or anything. She uh, she doesn't have game. You're killing me. She doesn't have dialogue. Uh, ba ba ba. Mayor's house is near the Fountain Square, yeah we know that bit. <laughs> and and this is this is the state that games were in the two thousands. Is I have known this girl for under a minute. Uh, and they're all like, you make an attractive couple. Game, you are absolutely destroying me right now. Okay, we can't walk around that way. <clears throat> just gonna just gonna double check. To make sure that Dolphin doesn't have any, uh... <sighs> make sure it doesn't have any, uh, settings for this. Oh, I can force aspect ratio! Okay, that's the wrong one. Amazing, okay, right. Theoretically, we should be fixed now, forever. I'm also gonna realize that I've got a tiny little pixel of black on the right hand side. So we're just going to quickly fix that up. Okay, right. Aspect ratio should be fixed permanently now. Mm. Uh, yeah, this is the guy's cast form. He says that. Uh, if you're very bored in FedEx City, one of my favorite pastimes is to get between this guy and his cast form, who normally run in sync. And he keeps running and the cast form stops. So you can make them out of sync for no real reason other than because they're there. Uh, yeah. That was me. Better not be the goons again for the next town over. Interesting. I found it also interesting that we don't get the Pokémon's names when we click on them. Uh, but this place, labeled PC, is, uh, 
the most important thing in any Pokemon game, it's a Poke Center, where we can get some free healing that we don't really need just yet. Uh, but we'll be able to get something else that we do need. Uh, one of the least obnoxious Poke Center themes as well. Like, some of them can get quite annoying when you spend too much time in Poke Centers. But this one, I can listen to all day. Uh, why does our healing machine look like a stove? I don't, I don't know. It does, though. I never thought about it, but it does. Uh, anyway, yes, here is our... Do we have anything in item storage? No, we do not. Okay. Uh, here is our save point. So, save that. Oh god, we're three quarters of an hour in already. Jesus, we've not done anything of the game. Uh, access to Pokemon Storage System, which we don't need yet, and we won't be using a lot anyway because we're not going to have very many Pokemon to be switching in and out the whole time. Uh, yeah, I'm a Pokemon trainer. I don't think she is. Yep, she's telling us how to save. We already knew that. This is really neat. The map of the city. Well, that is kind of cool. The city's not really big enough in game to need a map, but I guess it's nice. <laughs> Thanks, Boom Boom. Uh, we also have a second save machine downstairs. Uh, this is the Trade Center. This doesn't work until you finish the game, so we will not be doing any trading. Uh, the reason why it doesn't work until you finish the game is partly, I guess, because it's sort of balanced around the quite limited uh, number and variety of encounters you have. But also because a lot of the Pokémon in this are Gen 2 Pokémon. Stuff like, uh... Actually, none of the ones we've seen so far. But a lot of the Pokémon in this are, are Gen 2 Pokémon, uh, which weren't available in Ruby and Sapphire. You couldn't catch them. They were in the game, but you couldn't catch them. Oh, like Meryl. Yeah, exactly, Boom Boom. Uh... And so this, this game in its sequel XD served as one of the main ways to get Gen 2 Pokemon in Gen 3 games. Uh, if you're still traveling, you should suck up on supplies at the shop. <laughs> I recommend it. After all, it's my house. <laughs> Thanks! I will take your recommendation. On account of it is literally the only shop in town. So yeah, the shop's full of stuff. I don't think anyone in this place gives you free items, but like, marts are sometimes... Early game marts are sometimes places where you get items, so... Uh, he's playing a, a gacha machine type thing. What do you have for sale, sir? We can buy more potions if we need. Potions will be very, 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 very important on the run. Uh, Boom says it must be a pretty amazing shop if he chooses to live in it. That's a good point, actually. There's no sleeping quarters in the shop. Because, like, we can go upstairs and there's just more shop. Uh, I don't think I need any more of the heal these Healy items, the status Healy items. I am going to grab a few more super potions. Just because heal stalling is a, is a valid tactic. I'm also going to double check how much HP... Espion and Umbreon actually have. Uh, if we don't need to use a super potion, then we probably don't need to use a potion full stop, so I don't think I'm going to be buying potions. You can sleep stairs to Pokey Dolls and Escape Ropes. Uh, we have this kid upstairs. Tells you what some of these do. Oh yes, and that's a, a new mechanic that uh, we will have seen, but I didn't use. Uh, it's the call mechanic. Because this game has no wild encounters, uh, there's no run button in the in the fight menu, so instead we have a call button, which will be used for later. But it's also a free awakening. Uh, do catch a wild Pokemon? Need Pokeball. As you know, there are no wild Pokemon around these parts, so there's no demand for Pokeballs, so no one sells them. <laughs> the Oi button. <laughs> I could do with an Oi button just in general. Uh, this guy upstairs, he sells X items. These are Gen 3 X items, so they're only a plus one to a given stat. Uh, if you 
do like speedruns and stuff, you use these, but I hate X items as a rule, so I don't use them. They they have their uses, or specifically, like X attack and X special can actually have their uses. They're not that expensive either. I'm not sure why they're all different prices, but they're like they have their uses. But I just don't think they're worth the cost, because money, especially this early in the game, is quite limited. Uh, Boomer says the main use is to be exchanged for useful cash. Yep, pretty much. Uh, anyway, so, we're just doing a little sort of explore of the town. Hi, we're still not a couple! We managed to find anything else. No. There's the pre-gym! Oh, okay, you're full of useful information. It's actually called the Prestige Preset Center, which is the most stuck-up name that I can imagine. Uh, everyone calls it the Pre-Gym, which is the closest thing we have to a gym in this region. Uh, skilled trainers work on their own abilities as well as the Pokémon. It's on the raised middle part of town. Cool, we'll head there soon. Yeah, apparently I make her jealous. There's a couple more people to see and talk to. Contents of this house. Uh, they won't come out here. The thugs of Pyrite Town are more frightening to me. We've already heard about the neighbouring town's thugs. Uh, and I think this flashing screen means that there's a new TV broadcast. This is repeat. Never mind. Oh no, hang on! A Team Stagger member was arrested after being found hiding in the Echo Canyon. During interrogation, the Snagger member revealed the explosion resulted from a clash between Snagger members. Destroyed the Snag machine used for stealing Pokémon. Only the large machine was destroyed. The small portable one appears to have been taken by the Team Snagger member who blew up the Snagum hideout. Now, I'm not quite sure what a large, not portable Snag machine is good for. Because presumably to abduct someone's Pokémon, you have to, like, go to where they are. You can't really bring them to you. But anyway, I guess maybe you, you kidnap the Pokémon when it's not in its ball, and then you take it back to the machine to snag it, maybe? Question mark? We're still in the same aspect ratio. Yes! Success! Great success! There's been nothing but news about Team Snagger on every channel all day long. Well, I mean, there only is one channel, so that, that will happen. Usually they have at least one channel showing anime or something. <laughs> Alright, this old man might battle me? Yeah, let's have a fight. I really should have looked at the, uh, the guide before I agreed to this, because I have no idea what Pokemon he has, but it's probably fine. He's got a Hoot Hoot and a Sentret. We'll be fine. Sentret's a little tanky, but it won't cause us any problems just yet. When we start seeing Furrets, and this is going to sound weird, but when we start seeing ferrets, that's when we have to worry. Uh, I'm going to bite the Sentry, because I'm not sure if I can one-shot it. No, oh, okay, we did. You notice, of course, that while Umbreon's speed is only like two-thirds of Espeon's, it still outspeeds the vast majority of enemies, which is very useful when you rely on bite. And uh, making any Pokemon flinch uh, saves us the hassle of getting hit a lot. Uh, this early money and experience will be quite useful to us, because there's not a lot of like replayable fights for grinding up XP in the early game. Helps your fighting mostly basic Pokemon? It does. You're a bit of a spine! Just like me when I was young. Thanks. Anyway, here's uh, the middle level. This is where we're ultimately going. Uh, I really look up to just the leader of the pre-gym. And in fact, this building here in the middle is the pre-gym. He's a really tough trainer. Uh, we won't be able to beat Justy for a while, but I, we might be able to beat some of his friends. It's a place for trainers, Pokemon, to not only sharpen their strength and skills, but also their body and spirit. 
Uh, who says he had his spine removed and used it for a walking stick? Oh my god! Anyway, I am gonna uh, very quickly uh, pad into the uh, Bulbapedia to uh, have a look at Fenac City and the trainers in the pre gym and make sure that I can, in fact, uh, beat them. Really on a separate page to the city's page. Ugh. Right, pre-gym. Trainers. Uh Okay, yeah, we can't we actually physically can't challenge Justy for quite a while. Everyone else here, they're sort of level 26, 27, we probably can beat them. Uh they might give us a tiny, tiny struggle. Says, I hope you're probably for any pre-gym jokes. I actually hadn't even considered the possibility, but now that you mention it, I'm a little proud of you. Uh, right, let's talk to these people on the left first. I don't think they have very much interesting to say, but I like to speak to everyone. All Pokemon have types and abilities. I'm not the type that does his thinking in the head. Which... Where do you do your thinking? Actually, don't answer that. Uh, he's just going to battle until he does it by muscle memory, which is basically how I did it. Pokemon gain experience by winning battles. Then they level up. They learn all sorts of different moves. Uh, think about their order. It's important to think about which one should come out first. And then we have this lassie. She's the teacher. One does not become a good trainer simply by batting without strategy. Perhaps a reference to the fact that about half the trainers in this have no real AI, they just pick a move at random. Hello, are you listening on my class? Since you're here, I have something you might like. That's a Pokemon Digital Assistant. Sorry, I called it a personal digital assistant before. It's actually a Pokemon Digital Assistant. <laughs> the first guy doesn't make it easy. No, he doesn't, Buzzy Boom Boom. Ah. Uh, Dizzy showed the PDA. I've upgraded it and added the strategy memo function. You'll be able to check the types and abilities of Pokemon you met at a glance. I'll update your PDA with detailed data on Pokemon you met. I hope you make good use of it. So this is what we have instead of a Pokédex. Strategy memo. So we can see all the Pokemon we've met so far. Uh, and when we just see them, uh, we won't get all this information, but once we speak to her, all the Pokemon we've seen will then get, like, what their abilities are, which is more useful than the normal Pokédex entry, actually. Uh, as well as their, their name, their type, their Pokémon class, stuff like their size. We can have a look at them. I can't remember what my L and R keys are bound to. It's fine. <clears throat> we won't need those. Uh, it's not to assist the po it's to assist the Pokemon, not you. I see. Fair enough. Anyway, uh, so that's a moderately useful thing that we've picked up here. Except it's not really because we should know all this by now. If we don't, we're in big trouble. And uh, this is Justy, who runs the place. I'd say that you're traveling the two of you. What do you think? Would you like to have a battle? I introduce you to the trainers of the pre-gym. When you're ready to go, go to the battle area in the centre and stand at the left-hand side. Boop. Aw, thanks Rui. I'm glad that you've got my back by cheering. Four trainers. I... they might have more Pokémon than me. Possibly. No, they all have two each. Okay. Uh, you've got Grass-type Pokémon. Fair enough. Uh, what I don't know is what the moves of these Pokémon are in advance. So if they have some horrible move, be prepared for tragedy, I guess? <laughs> uh, 
Okay, a hop up in the sun cun should be extraordinarily easy. I don't know who's weaker, I think Sun Kun is weaker. Sun Kun has the stats of a paper bag, really. Uh Hop Hip at least has a little bit of meat on it. Uh, although, confusing it will be very helpful. Okay, bullet seeds. Uh, it's annoying. The most annoying thing is the length of time it takes. Then he says, I was just thinking the ginger girl looks like the girl from Ape Escape. And then the protagonist from Ape Escape came out to fight. Now I thought the protagonist of Ape Escape was an ape. I thought that was the game where you run around as like a gorilla throwing people into walls. Is it is it not? Oh, that's Ape Out! Oh, okay. You can see why I got them confused. <laughs> so which one's Ape Escape? Oh! And thank you so much to Shaka as well for following. It's lovely to have you along. Um... I hope you're enjoying the stream. I hope you're a big Pokemon Coliseum fan, because it is my favourite game. Ah, oh, Shaka? Uh, can I give a shout, shout out to Shaka? Shaka is wonderful. There we go. That's not what I meant to do, uh, but it seems to have sort of worked. Uh, no, Shaka is wonderful. Uh, you play Pokemon Emeralds. You also play lots of other things that I often sadly don't get the chance to see because of the peculiarities of when you stream and such, which is a shame, but uh, I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, I've also been playing some D&D with Shaka. Uh, this weekend just gone, I think it was. Uh, and I'm due to do so again this weekend coming. <laughs> anyway, that was Botan, the uh, the plant trainer with the thematic name. Shaka says Pokemon Emerald is unfortunately going by the wayside now the new PC has been built. Oh, that is a shame. Alright, there we go. That's Pokemon number one. That's training number one, even. Uh, we took barely any damage, so... I am... I'm gonna keep chugging along, as they say. You'll get back to it one day, you just have many a game to play. That's fair. Alright, so she has water type Pokemon. Shaka, you're killing me, but DD isn't tomorrow, it's on Saturday. Uh, I just had a minor heart attack, it's fine. Uh... At least I really hope it's on Saturday. I can't easily check right now. Uh... Let's pile everything into the Meryl. Meryl can be a bit tanky. Might not go down in one. Okay. Okay. Hoof! <laughs> oh, and you have a cool TwitchCon 2023 badge! That's amazing! I've not seen one of those. Uh, or maybe Shaka has secret D&D without us. That's also a possibility. We are we are not mono dungeonous here. You are free to have D&D with as many people as you like. Pop some bubbles on my face. This is back when bubble was 20 base power. Uh, will not cause us any great upset. I don't know why I said Polydungeonous when Polydragonous would have sounded better. Like, much closer to the word polyamorous. Um... Oh, yes! You, you have mentioned before your, uh, your, your occasional, like, uh, Guest appearances. Oh no, an ad. Oh, disaster. <laughs> I don't like those either, Shaka, but uh. Unfortunately, capitalism. And. Uh, I think they call it the Cozy Lives. 
<laughs> and what have you. Oh! Thank you so much for subscribing! That's wonderfully generous of you! Um... Thank you so much. Uh, I am very touched. And if you wish, when, when it comes time for us to, uh... Uh... Name a Pokemon, because you can't do that yet. Uh, I will be sure to set aside uh, a, a boy of your choice. Uh, who's this? My girl has been on the ultimate water type battle. Oh, I don't care. I don't care. You and your thematic Pokemon types go away. Bring out the next one. What, what theme is the next one? There's a ground one and a rock one. <laughs> uh, one of the one of the good things about a Colosseum Nuzlocke like, specifically is you get to know like if if the boy who's gonna carry your name is gonna be around the part of the team a long time before the name actually gets assigned to them. So you've got sort of a bit of leeway. Uh, you're gonna major luck play play Horizon Zero Dawn. Ooh, good luck. Uh, enjoyed that. It's a good looking game, I've never played it, but uh, it's on the list. Right. Can learn how a proper trainer battles for me. What is this kid, like eight? I'm twice your height, twice your age. And I've already blown up a building. <laughs> Actually, I think I've technically blown up the same building twice. <laughs> a youth Tory. Yep. Big sad that they're here. Uh, who am I more worried about? Uh, I think I'm more worried about Trappage, because it might have bite. And Bite will wreck Espeon. So let's get rid of Trappage. Okay, confusing it is very, very good. Confused plus probably killing it and yeah, okay. If not killing it, then the chance of flinch as well. Like that was that was chill. He has a white belly. He do have a little white belly. Trappage? Oh god damn it. Ah, uh, yeah, so... Uh, I can't... hit it this turn, so we're putting up a Reflect to save me from damage. Um, we're throwing out a Taunt just because I can't do anything else. Because we're both faster than him! Owie. Uh, but yeah, Trapinch is... well, Flygon, the final level form of Trapinch, is one of my biggest favourite Gen 3 Pokemon. Uh, this HP though. <laughs> I, I, I'm not picking up on these every time. I, I'm, I only notice when you tell me. Oh, we're nearly at double nice HP. We're one short, sadly. Anyway, this is written by Duggo. You notice we've had Duggo, the, the, the ground po Pokemon. We've had Liqui, the water trainer and Botan the plant trainer. Can you guess what the rock trainer is going to be called? Because that's who's coming up next. Wow! Wow! Rude! Oh, I... Mm, what one do you have? Geodune and Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn might be a little tough. I don't think Geodude will know self-destruct. Because that would be just mean to put in this early. But I'm gonna I'm gonna pause and do the last one after a heal, just on the off chance. Because we are doing a Nuzlocke. And death is an ever-present contender with our lives. Give us a heal. Yes, I'd like to heal. Oh yeah, you also walk more slowly when you walk into her. I'd forgotten that. It's quite annoying, actually. Alright. Do I have to go up here or do I have to speak to you? I have to speak to you. Right, one last guy. 
Oh, go to the battle area, stand on the left hand side. The number of trainers left is one. Buck up and keep going. Rocky, Clay, Flint, all good guesses. No, this lady's name is Gwyn for some reason. I don't know why they threw out the thematic naming just for the fourth one. I, it's beyond me. I don't know. Anyway, I'm assuming Jay won't help self destruct, and because I'm assuming it won't help self destruct, I'm gonna say that Rhyhorn is by far and away the bigger threat, turn one. The only way Geodude is a threat is if it uses rollout several times in a row. I don't think it's gonna get that far. It says the Lord of Cinder, which I don't know what it is. I, I'm sorry, I missed the reference. But that's that's fine. I'm not using any physical attacks. But Spike doesn't count this gen. When is Dark Souls final boss? Ah, okay, I see. No, I was never in a million years going to get that reference, I'm afraid. Ah, well that went well. You'll notice that a lot of battles Early on, especially, but also just throughout the game, a lot of battles are going to be Umbreon uses Bite, Espeon uses Confusion. Repeat. <laughs> My battle style must have been too sophisticated for you. I see. Yeah. I don't think Jussie's doing a terribly good job of, like, training these people. Oops. Hello. Right. Showed me a great battle. Deserves a gift. Oh, I love gifts. The White Herb. Oh, it's not a very good gift. You don't have a full party of Pokemon yet. When you get six of them, I'd like you to come and see me again. That's when I will be your opponent. And he has a level 40 party, so uh, let's hope that's not for quite a while. But we can now go downstairs, have a look around where all these people came from. Because uh, all of his trainers live in the basement. Where he has this really nice, like, multi-biome underground thing with actual trees growing. Uh, this is just because Justin was just too damn long of a name. <laughs> I don't begrudge them that. Also, hi, you and your Aaron would have been a much more interesting trainer to fight than anyone I actually fought. Uh, here's the rich kid. He's got a Sand Slash, apparently. He didn't use it. I guess he didn't use it because it's lost. Um, but I'm quite glad he didn't. That would have been a lot tougher than anything he did fight with. And that's a variety of trains, so any kind of Pokemon can train where they're most comfortable. Uh, this is not the Grass Trainer. This is a separate person who happens to have a Grass Pokemon. I don't know what she's teaching her Oddish to do, but it might be Head Back. Uh, and we have a Magikarp Trainer! She didn't fight me with her magic up, but it wouldn't have mattered if she had. I could have sworn there was an item around here, but I guess not. That's why I actually bothered doing this whole thing, because I thought there was an item here. Maybe it was the white herb that he gave to you. Oh well. Anyway, pre gym complete. Uh, we are just shy of halfway through our time. Uh, we can have a look around a couple more of these houses. This town was peaceful before, but it's been turning rougher because of Pirate Town. I don't want to have anything to do with them. Let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> that wasn't so bad, Boom Boom. That it could have been so much worse. Are you travellers? Is it a nice place? Think about going on, you should be careful. There's a town called Pyrite. That place is filled with thugs and other nasty people. Long time ago, this area was barren of life. Neither people nor Pokemon could live on this blighted land. And the, but the mayor's grandfather, the first mayor, founded Fennec by drawing water to this parched land. An inspiring tale. 
Although I don't particularly approve of like family dynasties of mares, but we're in. So we're in. Uh... Hang on. Oh, hello. I didn't know you could do that. I thought you could only do this if I chat spoke to you. Uh, yeah, we're in. This region is based off of uh, Arizona. So we're in. We're in Pokemon America. Uh, let's check it out. Let's babble. Okay. Well, it's a good job I'm sort of all fully healed and stuff. Rollerboy Cabe. Or possibly Kaib? Rollerboy doesn't have very good Pokemon. Although, I'm guessing his Silcoon probably does have attacks other than Hard Mode. Bug sadly doesn't resist Psychic. If I'd been in charge of the type matchup table, I would have probably made Bug resist Psychic. Uh, it's not like Psychic doesn't need the sort of help to be make it a little bit weaker. Uh, but as long as we can keep lynching people, knocking them down, I could be using Helping Hands and Secret Power here to make sure it dies, but uh, it's really not necessary. None of these early trainers are likely to challenge us without the help of like crits. Oh, and he's fallen over. There we go, getting not very much money, but any money is good. I didn't think I'd lose. Well, no, otherwise you wouldn't have challenged me, would you? Oh, he gives me... A TM41! Thanks! What, what's one of those? Uh, TM Torment. Oh, okay, never mind. Never mind! Alright, two buildings left. We'll be going up there in a minute. Actually, we want to speak to the person with the Jigglypuff first. Hello. You know, no! They say that Team Stag was high that was blown up. Yeah, I did that. Who could have done such a thing? Me! Have you mastered Torment? <laughs> th th thanks! Uh, oh, and this. These. I love I love the item boxes in Colosseum. I don't know why, I just do. I love the noise they make, if nothing else. Three super potions. Oh wow, that's really good. That's a really good item box. Uh, that large house is the mayor's home. Because he is the mayor, he has a bigger home than everyone else. That is how... Society works. If something concerns you while you're travelling, you should visit the mayor for his advice. Oh, hello. Oh, somebody else has been visiting the mayor for advice. They have a bodysuit that highlights their pectoral muscles, a hair that blows in an absence of wind, and glowing red eyes. <laughs> I guess you're a travelling trainer. I like what I see in your expression. Foo foo foo, the most normal person thing to say. I have a feeling I may see you again somewhere. Thanks! Don't forget the statement red skirt. I do quite like the skirt as well. Uh, that guy is, is a, a bit of a look. Anyway, here's the mayor. You must be travelers. Welcome to Fennec City. I am S. Kate. Now you wanted to see me. Is there something that I may be able to assist you with? Yes. My friend here was in a bag. I saw it! What did you see? A peculiar Pokémon. No, that's not quite right. A Pokémon that gave off a black aura, like a fighting machine. That, as opposed to a usual Pokémon, which is of course nothing, nothing like a fighting machine. Uh, and that Pokémon would attack people. Completely unlike normal Pokémon, which definitely don't jump out of the grass specifically to ambush and potentially eat small children. Um, Boomer says, oh god, she's one of those aura people. Well, yes, in the Pokémon world, that's a real thing. Like, aura is a, is a genuine, verifiable phenomenon, so I sort of have to give her a pass. Pokémon like a fighting machine, it attacks people. 
that were true, that would be truly frightening. But it's hard to believe. I don't know why. It's true. It's true, Mr. Mayor. Because I saw that Pokemon I was made the prisoner of some frightening men. Until just a little while ago. I'll order an investigation at once. There's no need for thanks. We mustn't allow thugs to do as they wish. Especially thugs that endanger a pretty young lady. I'll ask that you give me a little time. I promise we'll get some useful information for you. You appear to be a Pokemon trainer. Actually, he says, we appear to be Pokemon trainers, plural. So maybe she is a Pokemon trainer. <laughs> so I urge you to visit the stadium. The breathtakingly beautiful stadium befitting our oasis city. In case you missed it, that's where we're going. Uh, but first we can check upstairs. The mayor has like an assistant. Uh, who also thinks that we're a couple. Literally everyone does. There is zero romantic context between the protagonist and Rui. They're literally just... Like, she doesn't even speak to me outside of cutscenes. Um, that we're just a, a, a guy and a girl who happen to be in close proximity and that's enough. Uh, but yeah, I, I really, I adore the design of Fennec City and like all the water around against the sandstone backdrop, the waterfalls, I just think it's, I just love it to pieces. Anyway, we've been told to go visit the Pokemon Stadium, so we're going to go visit the Pokemon Stadium. I tell you what, I never noticed these uh, sort of hieroglyphics underneath the water here. Interesting. Uh, and this place is wonderful as well. There's a lassie in it. Wish I could soon battle the stadium as fabulous as this one. Well. Uh, we can't go through the doors. I don't know if we're ever actually allowed through those doors in this game. Welcome to the stadium. This is where we register trainers. The current challenge has already started. We're no longer accepting trainers for this challenge. Please come back and enter the next one. You're here to take part in the challenge. Well, no. You hit to watch the battles. That would be great, but sadly we can't. It's great to see some awesome Pokemon moves in a live setting. Now it gets cash and a technical machine for teaching moves. Oh, hello. Oh, sinister music. And a bunch of people who kind of look like Lobot from uh, Star Wars with the things they have on the back of their heads. We finally found you, you filthy double-crossing traitor! Oh, that's always a good way to start a conversation. Wrecking the hideout wasn't good enough for you, so you rip off the snag machine. You've got some nerve. Who are these people? Are they Team Snagum? What do they mean by traitor? Dizzy. Shock horror, you mean! Yep. Not only was I twice as tall as that kid, but I've also had way more careers than him. He's from Team Snagger, just like us. He's no ordinary member, he's a snagger, which means I get to keep my hair. <laughs> he's the best in Team Snagger at snagging Pokemon without fail. Is this true? Yes. That's a little shocking. <laughs> Hand it over, give back the snag machine. Dizzy, do you really have something like that? As it turns out, yes I do! That was the thing I got in the cutscene. You'll notice it's on my arm. Like, I'm literally wearing it. I can't show you because my curse doesn't show up. But I'm literally wearing it right now. Stang machine's built for trainers. When the trainer puts the stang machine on, their Pokeballs are converted. Ordinary Pokeballs are turned into snag balls that can steal Pokemon from their trainers in battle. No, no, let him, let him give us exposition. Ah, uh, that's why these creeps are chasing after you. Creeps? <laughs> we'll take it back by force. Battle time! More Pokemon battles. We have heal or save in a while. But, uh, Whackin should be fine. Uh, Corfish and Coughing. Coughing should go down super easy. Corfish actually has a moderate offensive punch. I'm not too worried. We do outlevel it quite significantly. 
And there, we're, it's about to be two on one. He also has Hypercutter as an ability, which I can never blimmin' remember what it does. Boop. Alright, I think we're up to level 27. Nom. Okay, you know, Corpus is not going to be a struggle then. Ah, oh, even flinched for us. Even better. I also, I really like that Espeon starts out knowing return. I don't know if it starts out with a max friendship return, I don't think it does. But just the fact that it starts out knowing the move that's like based on how friendly you are with your Pokémon, it's a good setup for like, where's the, the play character as like a nice person, despite his criminal past. Anyway, we get a, a, about one and a half Pokéballs worth of money out of these guys. I don't think this is over. We're gonna get the snag machine back. Well, what do you know, Dizzy? So you're from Team Snagum? I do know that! Yes, I already knew that! To be accurate, I should say former Team Snagum. It's okay, it doesn't matter to me who you are. You're my gallant prince who rescued me when I was in trouble. And to be fair, they are quite shippable. I don't really blame other people for calling us a couple. Um. Pull up something after listening to those creeps. We should go shopping for some Pokeballs. Yeah, so she has a plan. She's like... She's super on board with me being a criminal who can steal Pokeballs from people because she's got a plan. And it involves stealing Pokeballs from people. Like, tell us, tell me we aren't made for each other. <laughs> uh, ba -ba -ba, something about Pokeballs. I can't ask you what it was. Uh, I think we got to go to the Mart. Hello. Right, okay, they have no Pokeballs on their list. Uh, no, okay. Uh, we have to talk to someone here. Oh, yeah, someone here had information about Pokeballs before, was it you? The guy that runs the outskirts stand used to sell them before, but you have to keep that a secret. I don't know why you have to keep it a secret. I also find it interesting that he says he used to sell them before, which kind of implies that that uh, like the the lack of Pokemon is a somewhat recent phenomenon, or that that guy's really really old. It's never really explained why or doesn't have wild Pokemon. Like, the fact that it's a desert is probably explanation enough on its own, really. At least it was for this game. Uh, yeah, so, back off the outskirts stand. Do you have anything you need to say to us? The truck that was here is gone. We must have come back and taken off in it. She thinks they're from Pyrite Town. Well, we still can't go to Pyrite Town. But, uh, outskirts stand. Lonely petrol station, five million miles away from anyone who needs petrol. Hey, do you want a rematch? I was worried about you. Some rough looking characters came out asking about you. It made me worried. But you didn't tell them where I went, right? You you didn't tell them where I went, right? <coughs> oh, we've got a new news alert. Let's see what's on TV. Uh, notice the, the lack of the backdrop. We're just seeing breaking news. The smaller snag machine is compact enough to be carried by a single person. Wearing this machine transforms ordinary Pokeballs into snag balls. An alarming device that can actually steal Pokemon from their trainers. Let's so hope the missing snagger machine will not be used for criminal purposes again. A strange thing to hope, given that its only purpose is for criminal pur its only reason for existence is criminal purposes, but I'm sure it's fine. Yep. Hi, can I ask you something? Do you sell any Pokeballs? There's no call for those things around these parts. Where would I put them now? Here they are, they're a little dusty, but otherwise perfectly usable. Take these, I'll let you have some for free. And the first one is always free. Uh, since I found them, I may as well just put them out with the rest of my merchandise. If you need some more, how about buying them? 
So now he sells Pokeballs. He also sells Great Balls. I'm gonna grab. I don't think he does the Premier Ball thing, but I'm gonna grab 10 just to check. Yes, he does do the Premier Ball thing. Wonderful. Okay. I'm also gonna grab some Great Balls. Um, because I think, like, when the, the health of your Pokemon is a life or death matter, the the increased catch rate of a Great Ball is probably actually worth it to try and survive, versus normally the fact that the catch rate isn't that much better to necessarily always justify the cost. Uh, I noticed also my bitrate's getting a bit low, so please do tell me if the stream is looking sort of a bit janky or something. Uh... Just want to keep an eye on that, make sure you guys are not having some kind of horrendous experience. Anyway, I could spend more money on those. I don't know exactly how many we're going to need. Like, uh, oh, hello, here's this. Oh, look, at somebody who needs to be a bad. Bye bye. Uh, yeah, I don't know how many we need. It's... Um, we've got like 10 last and Pokeballs, it's probably fine. Right, uh, we can head out. And uh, back to Fennec City. Well, we really need to remember to save this time. Uh, hello. Tutu, something terrible's happened. All the scary men came here. They came and saw those two creeps who took off in the truck. Okay, where, where did they go? You, you don't know. They're just... they're here somewhere. I'm sure we'll, we'll be fine when we run into them. We already beaten one of them once. Oh, okay. We definitely got a... We definitely got a really terrible bit rain. Why are you doing this to me? Okay. Seems to be back without me doing anything. Ah, uh, let's have a heal. Oop. It says Richard Brown's acting threatening. <laughs> oh no. We're all, soon we will all be under his virgin thumb. Progress has been saved. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm not going to wander around town because I know where these guys have gone. Uh, they've gone to one of the two important places where things happen in town. Anyway, uh, so here's, here's Folly. And here is quite a lot of hair. And underneath it is a man called Mirror B, spelt wrongly. I don't know why he's called Mirror B. There's probably a good reason for it, but I don't know what that is. <clears throat> uh, anyway. Oh, now aren't you boys frightfully pathetic? You mean to tell me you were bested by these darling infants? Okay, maybe I'm not 16, I don't know. Darling, did you say your name was Dizzy or something? I so don't like saying this, but we're not at liberty to keep your lady friend at liberty. That sweet young thing, she can see things that ordinary people aren't supposed to see. That just will not do for what we're planning to do. No, it just won't do at all. <laughs> if you don't like pain, like most people, you can avoid the pain by keeping your nose out of places it needn't be. Boys! Oh, boys! I like how they stand to attention as well. Boys, I shall make my return to Pi right now. Do you remember that I'll be waiting for you to return with the little lady? Am I making myself clear? I won't accept failure from you again, boys. And then he says, <laughs> Which I, j I cannot make that sound anything less than stupid, but there we go. 
Let the music spin, let's get it on. He has the best theme. Uh, in, a, in a game full of wonderful music, he has amazing music. Sadly, it's over. You, you, you. Last time you caught me off guard. That's not going to happen again. Hi, Folly. We, we, we fought you, like, 20 minutes ago. Uh, interestingly, he has changed up his team in that time. We haven't really. I suppose we've leveled up. Uh, <laughs> shaming us gets <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm anticipating this being sort of kind of just as easy as before, really. Uh, but Folly is the first of many, many, many trainers you are going to see using uh, Lotad, Lombre, and Ludicolo. This game has a few Pokemon that it, like, really likes. And those three are high on that list. You'll see a fair few Furrets as well. Um, not a small amount of, of Trap Inch and Vibravis. Uh, absorb? That's fine. I did like no damage. Uh, there's a few other Pokemon in this game just like really light and you see lots. And I understand, you know, they were working with a smaller diversity of Pokémon back in Gen 3, but even within that limit, it's very noticeable. I got tripped up again. Yep. He, he is just destined to lose. Uh, I think the different areas that count as Pokémon being in mostly corresponds to, like, different... Uh, background scenes. Alright, and this guy, who has so far remained unnamed, is in fact Mira BP on Trudley. Folly's partner in crime, literally. Uh, has a Duskull and a Spinarak. Uh, Duskull should go down probably to a single bite. Spinarak is weak to confusion, should go down in one as well. Basically everything in the early game goes down to a single confusion. Uh, it's probably been more than half the Pokemon we've seen so far. Probably. And out comes Makuhita. Now when I said we can't really fault Rui, like she sees auras, but like it, she's seeing a real aura that is actually there this time. It's that one, that Pokemon. Those jerks catch me because I saw that Pokemon. I can see a black aura coming from it. They must have done something to that Pokemon. And just to prove that that Pokemon is evil, be careful, this Pokemon isn't afraid to attack people. I know, Dizzy, I hate to say this, but there's no other choice. Get that Pokemon back from the bad guys. Please, you have to. Only you can do it, because of course I have the only portable snack machine. So that was her cunning plan. We're gonna do crimes on bad people. Right, so here's a Makahita. Uh, and what we're gonna do is, we're gonna try and catch it. And it's gonna suck, because Makuhita is super effective against Umbreon, and weak to confusion. So... Yeah. Uh, so it will weaken it a bit. Okay, well, that actually did very, very little. That did a lot less than I was expecting. Even expecting it to not do very much. I might... Secret power in there. Uh, and because I'm not convinced of Espion's ability to not one-shot it, I'm going to use Helping Hand now that we set up a Reflect to keep ourselves alive. Helping Hand is a move I almost never use in Pokémon. Oh god! That- Oh, my heart just fell through the floor. Oh no, we might- he, he might knock himself out here. Because this is a move that has recoil. Oh god. 
Oh my god! Literally the first chance we have at catching a Pokemon! And it knocks itself out! <laughs> ah! <laughs> he was paralyzed. And he had, I'm assuming, only a 25% chance of using that move. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so. That obviously worked phenomenally well, except it didn't. Okay. We're, we've had a chance to catch one Pokemon, and we've so far caught no Pokemon. This isn't going so well. Uh, you're not supposed to be impressed. What are we supposed to do? We got flattened again. Mirror Bean's gonna chew us out. What do we do? What is there to do? Run away! <laughs> I love those guys. They're great fun. Uh, it's disappointing that we couldn't snag that Pokemon off them. Oh god. Don't worry, I already feel bad enough myself. <laughs> ah, what a disaster! I'm sure there are others like it. Yep, there's, I think, 13 more chances to snag Pokémon in the game. Let's get all of them back! Yeah, that's not happening. Uh, not in another slot. Anyway, so uh, the Mayor's house is uh, empty of Mayor, but still has the Mayor's assistant. I don't think she noticed what was going on downstairs. <clears throat> so that, I'm not terribly proud of that start, but you'll notice uh, those three coloured goons who are with Mira B. Well, uh, there's one of them over there. Uh, but that's fine, because if we need to leave, we can just... Uh, oh no, okay, there's one of them over there too. Well, I'm sure we'll be able to get out by the main entrance and exit, because why wouldn't we? Uh, you know, there were only three guards, and we've seen two of the... Oh no, there's one over there as well. Uh, we are trapped in Fennec City until we battle one of these goons, but that's fine, because according to the weird way that uh, Pokemon Colosseum divvies up its locations, uh, the Makuhita encounter was in the Mayor's House location, right? Which you might be thinking, well that's part of Fennac City, but it is distinct enough from Fennac City that these guys will be battling in a, in a location called Fennac City. So luckily we have an another chance immediately to catch a Pokémon. Ah, uh, I won't lie, Makuhita and, and later Hariyama were kind of going to be quite a big part of what I was planning to do. Like, Hariyama's a really good catch to have, and not having it for the entire game is gonna be really awful. Uh, Boom says, can't believe Discus do hide the Power Rangers. Uh, no spoilers, but uh... No, no spoilers, it's fine. Uh, yeah, so we have a choice of three goons to, to fight. And because of the particular way this game works, and it, how it's the source for Gen 2 Pokémon, uh, all of these trainers have one Shadow Pokémon each, and they have the middle forms of the Gen 2 starters. So the green one has Bayleaf, the red one has Quilava, and the blue one has uh, Croconore. Now, normally, I would move heaven and earth to have Quilava as my starter, uh, out, well, start it in air quotes uh, out of these three because Cyndaquil was my first ever Pokemon. I love its bits. Uh, it's amazing and wonderful and truly gorgeous. However, if all goes to plan, and current evidence is that it won't go to plan, but if all goes to plan, we will be encountering a another fire type that we will have a chance to catch. But we will not. I think, be encountering any other water types that we have the chance to catch. We will, very late on in the game, encounter a very bad grass type that we will have a chance to catch. Um, 
But I think my plan here is to say, very, very, very sorry to Philava, but we're not coming for you today. We're actually going to go and try and catch... Did I heal up? I did heal up. We're going to try and catch Crocodile. Oh boy, I hope I don't mess this up. If I mess up both of the first two encounters, then we're in a lot of problems for the rest of the game. Like, a lot, a lot of problems. Okay. Hi! I'm not about to let you pass. Or do you have this idea you can take me in a battle? Yes. Don't be crying out of regret later. So this is one of the few ch chances we have to actually make a choice about what Pokémon we get in the entire game. I think there are three Pokémon that we get to pick which one we have. And two of them come very early in the game, and one of them comes right at the end. So, we're starting out there, Shadow Crocodile. He's on the field already, which isn't how I choose for it to go, but it's probably okay. You'll see he's also level 30. Like, both of the Shadow Pokemon we've met so far have not hugely, but noticeably outleveled us. Uh, Grimer, on the other hand, will go down pretty easily, so I'm not too upset about that. Uh, but we really have to watch our health, because Crocodile's going to stay out on the field, will be attacking us, and we don't want to kill it. Because it does look good. But it's trying to kill us. Anyway, here's a Spoink. Oh, Crocodile has Bite! Oh, that's really bad news. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> this is fine! I can't... I actually don't have... Oh, I can, theoretically, heal up with two Super Potions. We'll get Espeon back to full. But I, uh, cause I, if I just use a regular Super Potion and just one of it, Espeon doesn't have enough health to survive another crit bite. Now, another crit bite isn't super likely. However, it's not a risk I particularly fancy taking, especially as we've already missed out on our first encounter of the game. So... Oh my god. Ow. Yeah, do that. That's fine. Spike uses Torment. I don't know if that means I now can't bite, or if it's okay because I didn't. No, I can't use bite at all. Okay. That's unfortunate. Um, best is, do I try and weaken Croconore and get Croconore off the field as soon as possible? Or do I try and get kill Spoink because I know I can kill Spoink? and risk facing loads more bites. But the thing is, of course, if I get another crit bite and Spoink attacks Espeon, it's game over. So I think I have to get rid of Spike. Uh, Spoink. Spike. We're using two suboptimal moves here because of that torment. I'd much rather use Helping Hand Bite, but uh, we're going to use... Not that instead. Okay, Scary Face is fine. I'm pretty sure he still has completely random, like, which move he uses. Otherwise he'd be using Bite every time. So that's good for us. That's really good for us. The only problem is it might mean that he uses a Shadow Rush and kills himself like the bloody last one did. Okay, we're going to Bite again. And we're going to Reflect. With a Spoink. Kill the pig. Yes, pig is dead! Pig is dead, long live the pig. You can scary face as much as you like, friends. That's so chill. Okay. 
He's definitely now in a range where we can start throwing balls at him. The question... is, uh... Okay, I'm actually... I'm gonna tab out because I'm gonna look up what secret power does in Fennec City. What, like, how strong it is. And then I'm gonna check Umbreon's stats to see if I think secret power will be a safe move to use in case I accidentally get a crit. Uh, okay. In Fennec City... Has the chance to lower accuracy by one stage. Well, how much power does it have? Does it always have the same power? Okay, it always has the same power. That's good news. Uh... Umbreon. So you have... A special attack of 45 and a regular attack of 43. You have Bite, which is power 60, and Secret Power, which is power 70. However, because you're a Dark type, Bite is actually power 90, because you get stabbed. So Secret Power does a bit less damage than Bite. It doesn't do a lot less damage than Bite. Uh... Students, I was expecting the spike to literally die. <laughs> yep. Uh, one of the things I really love about this game is the the animations. They're so much more characterful than any of the modern Pokemon animations. Partly, a lot of them were ripped from Stadium, which like doesn't bother me that they reuse them. As long as they reuse good ones. Uh, if you catch him, can you call him K9000? Because he's a water Pokemon. Uh, I can definitely put that on the list. We will not be able to, cro uh, to nickname Croconaw for a while. Uh, I will let you know perhaps a little bit later on when we will be able to start nicknaming Pokemon. Uh, but we will not be able to nickname Croconaw right away. But I can certainly, if you if you keep that in your head, I can certainly remember that you were the first person to uh, make a nickname request for Croconaw. So, the question is, do I want to use a secret power? It doesn't change type, right? Hang on. That's an important thing to double check. The effect and animation of secret power are determined by the environment, but not the type. Okay. Because uh, nature power, which is a very similar move, does change type. I think I'm okay to use secret power. But uh, it may not matter because we're gonna lob balls first. Right, in fact, let's use the Premier Ball in the hope that this is our first catch. Just straight away. That would be amazing. Oh. We were close. I am so tense right now. Oh god, he's shadow rushing. I forgot he could do that. I forgot he could do that and hurt himself. It does quite a lot of recoil damage as well. Every stream from now on, you're right, dibs on Crocodile. Okay, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. In terms of health, he is fine. Um. See, I could taunt you, but I don't really want you to. I want you to use Scary Face actively. Um, do I think it's worth healing? I don't think so. I think you're going to be fine for now. Okay, Pokemon time. Uh, and we can burn a, a, a helping hand in order to stall, but actually calling stalls for free doesn't cost any PP even. This battle is balancing don't die with don't kill it. Espeon! Nope, it's not doing anything. Oh my god, sir! Okay! 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 Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, Umbreon can still tank another hit.
Just about. Espeon cannot, unfortunately. Even though it's expensive, it's time to see promotion again. Oh my god. So the quicker we catch this thing, the better. Oh my god, we got it! <laughs> okay, okay. It's fine. You're tough. Dudley and Folly cannot be blamed for losing. <laughs> oh my god. That? Okay, we can breathe now. We're just a little soggy. I'm a little soggy! <laughs> From that encounter, my god. Uh, what was that strange Pokemon? What did you people do to it? Pokemon that we turned into a fighting machine by artificially closing the door to its heart. No, you didn't! I love when she just takes it as red as that's a thing you can do. <clears throat> you artificially close the door to that poor Pokemon's heart? <laughs> Knowing that's not going to help you do anything. Uh... Oh, okay, well, boom, I guess there's a lot of stream delay at the moment. <laughs> I hadn't even realised. Uh, I'm going to take a drink after that because my throat, as you probably hear, is getting a little, little hoarse. Anyway, he's, uh, he's sodded off. Uh, if we go to the other exits, we'll find the others have all sodded off as well. But here's the weird thing. Rui says when she was little, she heard about that. Who goes around telling stories of that? They say that if any Pokemon closes the door to its heart, it will be gradually reopened by battling with it. Well, that's handy because that's the main mechanic by which we interact with Pokemon. Dizzy, let's go. Those guys are probably headed for Pyrectown. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, after it was in Pirate Town that they captured me. Okay, fair enough. I mean, there's not many other places for them to go in the middle of the desert, so, uh... But I just love the idea that they're all running off across the desert on foot to Pirate Town. Uh, I desperately need a heal. Uh, but we have three Pokémon now, and one of them is a Croconaw. Uh, and that Croconaw knows Surf, right? Right, right? Well, no. Um, the way Shadow Pokemon work is, they get all of their super awesome moves when you're fighting them. But uh, when you get them, it's Shadow Rush only. And as we've seen before, Shadow Rush, moderately strong, but has recoil damage. In a game where if your Pokemon faint, they die. Sorry, in a, in a mode where if your Pokemon fit, they die. But he comes with a Mystic Water, which will make his Surfs more powerful, which is nice. Uh, the door to its heart is tightly shut, and you see, instead of an XP gauge that uh, Espeon and Umbreon has, he doesn't have that. He can't level up. He has a heart gauge instead. So this is all going to be very interesting. Uh, he also has the ability Torrent. Uh, which means when he's below, I think it's a third health, his uh, water moves get stronger. Balancing your health to make sure you're in torrent slash blaze slash uh, overgrowth is a really important part of speedrunning this game, apparently. It means you can one-shot a lot of Pokémon that you couldn't otherwise. But for me, keeping the Pokémon out of that range is going to be very key, because I don't want them to have low health. <laughs> Oh my god, let's uh let's drop a save. Oh, 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 oh. I accidentally spanned the A button a few too many times there. Right, and you'll see we have a, a snag Pokemon one. Fifty percent success rate so far. Oh god. <clears throat> but yeah. So this this game it's moderately hard, even as a base game for Pokemon. Because Catching Pokemon in double battle is actually quite difficult. Uh, anyway, I believe that now on our map is... Not Pyrite Town. I'd forgotten about that. Yes, it's this thing. 
Uh, and we get a, another little nice cutscene of us zooming across the desert. I really genuinely love those. Here's the construction lot. You can see there's a big old tower in the background. And a bunch of sort of baubles out in the middle of the desert. Why, why did we stop here again? There's a construction site. It's not a safe place to be. There's no place for tourists to visit. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's fairly ugly looking at the start here. Interestingly, of course, everything behind seems to be completely finished. Uh, it's just this bit that has construction going on. Been working hard, I have. Let me tell you, making this a huge tower is a massive job. It's hard to imagine even for me. You'll come back to visit when we're all done. There'll be a Colosseum, all credits, on top of the tower. Amazing stuff. It's been a mighty long time. I can't rightly recall when it was that I was last at home. We're just about done here. All that's left is to clean up the site, and we're done. He said the thing. He did said the thing. Uh, anyway, that's the construction lot. Okay, now we can go to Pirate Town. Oh, I didn't read the description. Hang on, hang on. Okay, but brace yourselves because this is a great piece of music. I love this. Oh, I love this piece of music so much! <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you so much to Stereochromus for the follow. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you're enjoying the stream. Uh, jazz. Yep. Jazz and clickies. I love it so much. Ah, all of the music in this game is so good. Uh, we have uh, a green-haired person and a, a French gendarmerie, I think. Uh, also, thank you so much for the Hydrate Redeem. I do keep forgetting. Uh, Mr. Johnson, give a man a break here. I keep telling you I don't know anything. That better be true, Kale. If you're trying to con me, I'll know about it. Mr. Johnson, sir, I wouldn't think about lying to you. You've got to believe me, right? Alright, fine. I'll let you off easy today. See you. So yeah, that's that's the uniform the police wear around here. Meanwhile, uh, Kale is going to chuckle to himself about how evil he is. In classic villain fashion. I'm I'm moderately confident it's safe to talk to him. I haven't seen your face around these parts. Well you tourists, if you don't want to get hurt, you should get lost and quick. Okay, we can talk to him. That's good. Uh yeah, the streets of Pyrite Town are not safe. They're full of people who want to fight you. Uh, oh, and Boomer has redeemed a dino fact. It's a fact about the dino that had a Pokemon based on it. Ooh! Uh, that's moderately tough. Partly because when it comes to specifically dinos, uh, not many of the fossil Pokemon are actually dinos, but I'm fairly confident I can do it. Uh, hmm. Okay, well, well here's, a, here's an easy one. So, uh, T-Rex, right, uh, has Pokemon based on it, those being uh, Tyrant and Tyrantrum, the fossils from Gen 6 that we didn't take when I played Pokemon Y. Uh, and it's, I, I chose choose these two specifically because Tyrant obviously is a, is a junior Tyrantrum, and it's now believed that what was thought to be a, a separate species of dinosaur called Nanotyrannus uh, it's now strongly believed by a lot of people that uh, there's, this genus of dinosaur now, Tyrannus, is actually just a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex. Uh, but it's a very kind of controversial thing, this idea of saying, well, this fossil is actually just a baby one of that fossil. Uh, so it, it's not set in stone, but uh, yeah, that's... I, it, a lot of the stuff that's come out of specifically the Hell Creek Formation, where Tyrannosaurus is from, has had this kind of controversy brought up about it. But I, I think it's really cute if we have a baby T-Rex. I think that's great. Uh, because all of the definite confirmed T-Rex specimens we have are adults. Apart from, perhaps, no, Tyrannus. It's just a little baby. It is just a little baby. 
Ah, uh, there we go. That's your Pokemon Dinosaur fan. If, if I get another redeem like that, I may have to be a, a non-dinosaur dino fact, but it'll be something extinct, and that counts. Alright, let's go into fortune telling, because uh, restricting ourselves to aura sight and walling off doors to hearts isn't enough. People call Fatine the mother of Pyrite. Her ability as a fortune teller is highly regarded. Just a while ago, she even determined where my wife is living since she left me. Stop. <laughs> I forgot about this guy. Anyway, hi Fatine. Find what you seek, be it an object, person, or luck. Welcome to Fatine's fortune telling chamber. I am Fatine. It's my fortune telling chamber. If ever a problem clouds your brow, you shall come to me. Whatever your problem may be, my fortune telling shall lead to the solution. Woe, woe, woe. Do you, do you have any? No, okay, you don't have an actual fortune for us. Gotcha. I suppose you're in the middle of a meeting with the client, so that's fair. Right. I'm gonna go and tab out again so I can check uh, the wiki and see who is safe to speak to in Pyrite Town. Because that's quite important to know. <laughs> so I don't get caught off guard. <clears throat> Trainers. Okay, outside of Dual Square, that's actually not that bad. That's probably fine. So this old man, for instance, should be safe. This is Pyrite, the town of Earth, Wind, and Money. Sorry, I should be talking like an old Wild West guy, shouldn't I? This is Pyrite, the town of Earth, Wind, and Money. You appear to be outsiders. You'd best beware, there are many ne'er do well sorts here. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, Boomer says he's his ex wife kept the ironing board. His work shirts are all crinkly. <laughs> oh dear. Um, but Pyrite is not uh, a totally lawless town. Uh, we've just been. We, that's police brutality. Um, <clears throat> but this is Johnson. Uh, there's trouble afoot. There's talk that thugs have been witnessed using strange Pokemon. Yes, witnessed by by us. Yo, know, Chief, I beg your pardon. That story isn't new, I've heard about it over and over already. Oh, oh Chief, there you are, you're such a killer. Yeah, these are the police. We actually have not uh, Officer Jenny police in the Pokemon game. At the time, this was revolutionary. You'll see also uh, wanted posters at the back for uh, every single member of Team Snagum who happens to look identical. The really big guy who's in perhaps in charge of Team Snagger, we saw him in the opening cutscene, uh, and some random 12-year-old. Wanted for probably murder. I'm Johnson. I'm the law around here. It's my job to uphold the peace in this town. And he's not been doing it well. Meanwhile, this is Charles, the chief of police. Are you two travellers? Whether you are or not, to be best if you were to get out of the town as soon as possible. It's descend into a state of lawless chaos. I couldn't guarantee your safety if anything were to happen. Uh, they also guard the save point, which is very useful. Uh, and they have actual prison cells with with a person in them. Hello, I can't speak to them. Uh, and over here, who might it be but Trudley and Folly? Listen, you have to promise don't tell Mirror B that we're hiding out here. After we blew our last chance, we couldn't go back, so we turned ourselves in for stealing that truck. And here we are. If we stayed here, we'd be safe. <laughs> I love it. I love it to pieces. But uh, yeah, that's the sort of criminal organization that we're dealing with here, where they're safer in prison than reporting failure back to their boss. Uh, this guy is safe to talk to. Hmm. You thugs must be Mirabee's newest recruits. Okay, I can understand you calling me a thug. I'm an actual criminal. But does Ruby look like a thug to you? Shoot, beat it. I don't have any money to give us the likes of you. Uh, and these people have a house. Some, a nice old lady. Trying to sell me something? Well, I don't want it. Back Town's always had a history as a rough town. All the muscle-bound rough roughnecks, that's not a surprise. When Duking was in charge, there wasn't any of this lawlessness that you see today. What's come over him? 
Interesting. Actually, is there a thing in here? No, okay. Thought there might be an item in there, but there was not. Uh, and this building has a little G on it. There is also a worn gear on the floor. You'll see a lot of those. Uh, the G stands for... Duking! The name's Duking, I run the Colosseum here. If you want to enter battle, go see the Colosseum's receptionist. If you'll excuse me, I'm busy. Yeah, so he runs the Colosseum, and I suppose that sort of makes him the de facto mayor? Or person in charge of the town? I, I think it's a little bit like how gym leaders work in regular Pokemon regions, where, like, they're the de facto important person. Uh, but yes, he's busy. Uh, he also has a child. I'm the lookout. Nobody's supposed to get by me. There's nothing special behind the bookshelf. Wow, what an oddly specific denial. I guess I won't look behind the bookshelf then. Oh, wait, hang on. <clears throat> oh, he doesn't react once you've opened it. Hang on. So yeah, behind the bookshelf is a cave. Sure, why not? Uh, with children in it. Bimu says, is it not probably Duking, like Duval? I don't know. Isn't that what I was saying? Or is that, or do you mean ducking, like Duval? I don't know what a Duval is. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to keep saying it Duking. Uh, if he gets dressed up, maybe he'll put on a brooch. Uh, my sister hasn't done anything but chatter. I'm so bored, I want to play house. What? Why do you say Duval with a Y? I don't! I say it with a U! It's got a U! It's the second letter! It has a U! It's pronounced U! <laughs> Are you Papa's friends? I'm Marcia. I'm pleased to meet you. Sorry, we're busy. We're talking about something that's quite important. Please come visit and play with us another time. Yeah, so the, these these children in the cave are having a very serious meeting with quite a large quantity of drink. <laughs> uh, Stereochromus asks, what are those kids drinking? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's a lot. I'm, I'm only moderately concerned. It's probably fine. They also have, like, a desk with a computer. These are the most serious kids. Boom says, okay, so I meant... Oh, okay, Duking, like Duval or Duvet. Okay, I see, gotcha. Okay, I'm now on the same page. Uh, ba -ba -ba. We've got to somehow snag them from those criminals. Well, well, Heidi, Heidi, you you're looking to snag something from a criminal, you say? Well... Am I just the person for you? How did I get in here? Oh, there was a button on the bookshelf. Metal Brother's supposed to be on the lookout. Yeah, he, uh... He failed. Oh, hello, cutscene. Duking! King! How much more are you going to take from Mirabee and his stooges? They're using you and the Colosseum. What's the matter with you? Have they sucked the spirit right out of you? Yeah, through a straw. <laughs> So you just clam up? I've lost faith in you. Well, oh, okay, bye. The man that went out is Silver. He's Duking's friend. He was really angry. His face looked all scary. Yes, Silver, not to be confused with Silver, the rival from the Gen 2 games. This is a completely different Silver. <clears throat> Sorry, but I'm busy. You'll have to excuse me. Well, nice guy. I mean, he looks like he could sort of pound me with a fine, into a fine pace with just his hands if I got him cross. So, you know, there's that. <clears throat> this uh, run-down, rusty old place is a Pokemon. It's not very far away from the other Pokemon, so I... It, uh, Boomer says, what have you bought him a drink? If you were offered 10 potions for 10 pokey, would you want them? Yes. If there was a deal that good, I'd keep it to myself. Strange old man. 
What do you have for sale? Oh, you have hyper potions! I don't need hyper potions yet, but it's good that you have them. You also have full heals, which I will probably need later on, but not right now. You also have revives, which I definitely won't need. I might grab... Two more super potions to replace the ones I used. I'm not tremendously happy. With that, but we'll, it'll be okay. Uh, yeah, so when I said the streets weren't safe, this guy is the very first not safe person on the streets. What do you have? Okay, you're actually also going to be our first trainer to have more than two Pokemon. Yo, your outfit's kind of weird. I, I think Wes's outfit is really great, actually. I love his character design. Uh, but you're a trainer too, aren't you? Yes, good. That's okay then. I'll teach you about one of the few this town has. Here we have street battles, rather than exchanging greetings! Mwahahahaha! Boom says Crocodile Man had three? Oh, that's right, he did. Ah, yes, you are correct. Anyway. Uh, so, Centric, another one. Halo, we're probably going to see more than a few Talos in this game as well, actually. But uh, getting in every fight we can is going to be a solid thing to do, I think. Uh, the only problem is we've got to sort of balance, now that we have three Pokemon, we have to balance getting them all up, trained up. Because <clears throat> uh, we don't want to not use Croconaw at all. Because we've got to purify him. And it says, it's okay, Talo is my favourite Beyonce song. I don't know what that means, but it's probably fine. Uh, who's weaker here? Taylor's probably weaker here. Quick attack is really annoying. I wish I'd taken you out first. That actually did more damage than I really expected it to. Uh, also, the other thing you'll notice about Colosseum Double Battles uh, is that unlike basically any other battle, they send out their Pokémon straight away after you knock out their other Pokémon, like in the middle of the round. Uh, which is a, I think, a unique mechanic to this and XD Gale of Darkness. Uh, but what it means is that, bizarrely, it is theoretically possible to knock out four enemy Pokémon in a single round. Because if you use a move that hits both enemies, like Sir, so, you can wipe out both of their Pokémon, he'll send out two new ones to replace them, and then your other Pokémon can use a move like Sir. Uh, it's... Unusual. Uh, Slackoth will act this turn, won't act next turn. Mm, okay, let's get rid of Slackoth before it, it acts, because we can't hit Taylor before it kills us anyway, or attacks us anyway. Oh, that hurts quite a lot, you know? Oh, a crit! That will definitely kill Slackoth. Okay. Nice. Do, 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 do. And the bite will finish off the battle. Oh, a crit bite! How useful! I mean, we got two crits in the same round there, so actually, I'm gonna shut up. Bum, bum. There's Peter Calder! Whoops, you were better than me! Now we get a little bit of money. Now, You'll notice so far we haven't met a healing machine in this town. Uh, you're not bad at all, your Pokémon are tops too. Foo foo foo, I can see it in your eyes. You're just like us, it's easy to see. Yeah, the game doesn't sort of shy away from, uh... ...my... ...criminal... ...tendencies. Ah uh, yeah, there's no healing machine, but if you want... ...we can stay in the Pyrite Super Grand Hotel. Uh, and heal up for a hundred pounds. Well, we're not going to do that because it's quite easy to go back to Fennec and heal up. Uh, yeah, this guy slept through the last week. He was totally exhausted from the construction job. Apparently some fabulously rich guy had the tower built. 
I love, by the way, the interior decor here as well. Uh, you might disagree, and you are allowed to. Who's this then? It wasn't that long ago when Duking was the man of Pyrite. Now that right out there weird Mira B and his stooges ride hard o ride herd over the town. I wonder what's so special about him, that guy. I like also how the rooms are uh, uh, numbered in really big numbers. Uh, and we have a snoozing person, I guess. Oh, I can't talk to you. Oh no, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Kind of charming little hotel. Okay, and then beyond here is Dual Square. Dual Square is so cool because it's where you come to have lots and lots of fights. Hmm. Now, this next fight coming up is probably a really ideal one to have Crocodile out for. Because Espeon should make very short work of it. However, Espeon is a little bit damaged. But we're gonna heal up straight after this anyway. I think we can take this. I think we can take this. Look what we have here. You're quite the hottie. Yeah, everyone is obsessed with how attractive we are. Why don't you lose that wallflower and be my sweetie? <laughs> I didn't notice she has the hand on hip pose right now. That's great. <laughs> He's all serious, uncool, I'm only teasing out of boredom. Guy like him, he's not to my taste. I'm furious now. Did the beer man stomp her down? <laughs> We're just getting into a fight because she like... <laughs> she insulted her brother flirt with me. Uh, anyway, yes, yeah, so we're fighting Chaser Emok. Uh... And we're using our Shadow Crocodile for the very first time, and as you see, we send out Crocodile and his heart gauge immediately goes down. Also, oh dear lordy, she's a chaser. Yeah, chaser is a trainer class here. We're going to be fighting a lot of chasers. Not all of them will be quite as flirtatious, but some of them might be. Uh, I'm slightly more worried about the Zubat, because it might no bite. I don't think Gulpin will no bite. So we'll just uh, we'll just make sure we kill that Zubat. Oh, it's definitely dead. Oh, it's very dead. Mm -mm. Uh, Shadow Rush. Boom. Okay, Gulpin, pretty tanky, but we've got confusion on our side. Yawn should be fine. By the way, I love the animation for Yawn. Actually, it's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna sort of keep uh, hitting them. There we go. Nothing too difficult. Nap times. Night night. And yeah, as you noticed, uh, Crocodile doesn't get any XP. Chase the Emok. Yeah, we got all serious. And a little bit of money. What kind of a man battles a frail girl like me without easing up? You're not going to win the hearts of girls that way. Apparently, I don't need to. <clears throat> so yeah. What time is it? It's half past. Okay. It's about time for us to make, scarily, our next capture. Uh, I'm going to go heal first. Because, oh boy, am I going to need it. Um, but yeah, this is... The next area we've got coming up is your square. And this is the second of three points where we get to choose which Pokémon we catch. Or which Pokémon we encounter and try and catch. Uh, and it's very important to make the right choice. And I don't strictly know what the right choice is. But I think I have a pretty good idea of what the right choice is. Uh, let me just save here. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about very soon. 
I'm just gonna have a quick drinkies. Love the dynamic shots as you move from place to place. Uh, I also think that actually the two people we've already fought will rematch us if we speak to them again. Uh, so we will uh, endeavour to avoid doing that. But, does it come up here? Izzy, it was here in this square that I saw that strange Pokemon. Tried to leave town afterwards, that's when those creeps grabbed me. Should be careful, even at the best of times there's nothing normal about this town. So. This ring of one, two, three, four, five, uh, six trainers. This is dual square. Every single person here wants to fight us, and I believe every single person here has a shadow Pokemon. Which means we have options. We have options for what to pick. Uh, and I'm gonna switch out. Croconaw from the front of my party. I know he, he only just got there, but we're switching him out again. Oh, I've also remembered there was a thing that I meant to do. Uh, hang on a sec. Because I actually have ready and waiting uh, some... Oh, where's it gone? Uh, some little Pokemon guys to keep track of who is in our party. Uh, I do actually need to go and grab one for Croconaw. Uh, I was sort of hoping that we'd have a uh, Makuhita alongside, but we don't. But that's fine. Uh, if I keep saying it's fine, it will eventually become fine. There we go, there's Croconaw. So, okay, we can keep track of our party on the left-hand side there. Pokies, yes! Yes! Uh, I I know that when I play Pokemon Y, you got, like, fancy, nice custom art for everything. It might happen, but don't count on it happening. I don't always have the artistic urge. <clears throat> uh, but yes, so, Croconaw. You need to uh, swap out for Umbreon because we're catching new Pokemon and the Pokemon I intend to catch is held by you. So you shall be our first encounter. Oh god, I'm terrified. Oh ho ho, do you feel like sticking around for a demonstration of my Pokemon's moves? Yep. I like your attitude. Feast your eyes on these. This is, uh, I think supposed to be Street Performer Diogo. But I always read it as Saint Performer Diogo. Because that's what the abbreviation ST dot means to me. But, uh, Shadow Pokemon. Uh, wait for it. I'm gonna watch Rui clench her fists and stare. Uh, and we have got our Shadow Flaffy ready for us to catch. Now, I don't want to use any moves that make contact with that Shroomish. I don't think Bite should come even close to one-shotting Flappy. And Confusion might one-shot Shroomish. If we're lucky. We were not lucky. <clears throat> Shroomish is going to stick around for a turn. Okay, Bite is fine. Boom says, your least favourite of one of your favourite boys. Oh, oh no, what's he using? Is that Stun Spore? Uh, Stun Spore is not great, but at least it doesn't damage us. Uh, and because we are now paralysed, I can actually bite the Shroomish with impunity if I want to. I don't want to, but I could. Uh, Moon says it's good, it's just not as good as Marine Band Force. Oh, yes, I see what you mean. Yes, no, I. I don't. I, I, I love all of the designs actually from that family, and it is a lo it is a great family design wise. I adored using Flaffy in Pokemon Silver. Um, I actually kept my Flaffy as a Flaffy for a long time after it would have naturally evolved because I like I like specifically Flaffy a lot more than Ampharos, but I lo I love. Uh, okay, we are really really paralyzed. 
Uh, but we're at a time before electric types are immune to paralysis, so actually that Flaffy has paralyzed itself, and that's going to make it a lot easier to catch, which is great. Ah. Uh... I could tag in the Crocodile and pray that it doesn't use an electric attack to try and get some Shadow Bar off, but I don't think that's a worthwhile risk to take. He says, I feel like I did that as well once. Maybe I noticed Amphros being slow. He is a bit slow, and uh, if if we do catch this Flaffy successfully, you're going to notice that, yeah, oh, it's a bit slow. Uh, but I'm kind of happy to sit here paralyzed and just kind of sort of call and stall and catch Pokémon. Uh, Sarah Chromis once got a Shiny Mare Reef on Pokémon Y. Ooh! I'm, I'm a little bit jealous. I do like Shiny Mare Reef. I can't, off the top of my head, remember what Shiny Amphros looks like. Uh, but yeah, we catch her Flaffy, it's our last Pokémon, so we win! And we have four Pokémon now! Hooray! Uh, I outperformed you. Yes, I did. Let me just uh, go and grab a Flaffy image. So we can add that straight to our... Oh, I'll add that straight to our party. Wonderful. Uh, Shiny Emphasis is pink. Oh yes, I remember. Uh, and yes, take that Saint Performer. That there will there will not be uh, a shortage of Saint Performers. Ah, uh, Diego, you're surprisingly good. I think you deserve to know a little secret about a certain Pokemon move. The move Shadow Rush inflicts damage on any kind of Pokemon without being affected by their types. The amount of damage doesn't vary with the target Pokemon's type, so it's easy to use. Everyone wants to know why the trainers here have this strange Pokemon. I'm sure of it now, the town's hiding a big secret. Dun dun dun. Uh, I need to go heal because I'm paralyzed. Okay, so there's our encounter for Pyrite Town. I think it might technically be called... Hang on a sec. Uh, no, okay, it is called Pyrite Town, the area. Who says that floor vent seems sus? The floor vent is quite sus, actually. You're right. Um, I'm sure it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, it is slightly unfortunate that we have to run back to a whole different uh, city to heal, but it's not the end of the world. Da -da. Right, so now we have a whole bunch of other people in uh, Dueling Square in order to, that we need to defeat. And technically, I believe, as, again, we can rematch all these people as many times as we want. So this is our first source of actual, like, grinding and infinite money. Uh, I won't be doing too much grinding on stream, but I do want to fight them all once on stream if I can. Uh, what I do need to do, though, is uh, I'm going to need to figure out in a sec. Uh... Who is who? So I make sure that I've got the correct people at the front of my party. Because I want to work on opening up those heart gauges. Uh, that's going to be moderately important, especially for these two Pokemon that we're already planning to use. Uh, but I don't want to send anyone in to something that's going to kill them. That would be bad. So we've got Rider Van, who has a Mistrevious. And Rider Nova has a Shadow Noctowl. Those are, these are the two guys who look the same, uh, and they're not in any kind of sensible order on Bulbapedia, so I am going to have to check a separate resource to double check which one's which. <laughs> okay, Vant and Nova are identical. Vant is on the right side of the circle, Nova is on the left. So, the one on the right side of the circle has Mistrevious, uh, the one on the left has Noctowl, that's good to know. Okay, so we'll go up against Vant first. 
he's got a bunch of normal types of mischievous. We should be fine to use just sort of whoever, I think. Uh, twins. Yeah, twins, I guess. Uh, it's more just that, you know, they're the same trainer class, so they all look identical. Much like how, uh... Oh. I was about to say, like, how this chaser looks identical to that chaser, but she's not a chaser, so she doesn't look identical. Never mind. Ignore me. I'm being dumb. Okay. Uh, ba -ba. Right, well, basically we just don't want Espion out front for this, is the main thing. Croconaut, I don't think we'll have access to Bite yet. But we'll see, I suppose. I haven't saved, have I? I didn't save the Poké Center. Let's go save real quick. <laughs> Before we do something we regret. Oh yes, yeah, snagged Pokemon too. We're at a 66% success rate. I can't believe I messed up that math either. Anyway. Let's not dwell. Yeah, ha, ha you're looking to battle. Yes. That's too funny. Count me as if your life depended on it. Noted. Uh, yeah, this is right of that. With his sort of blue crotch trousers. The streamers and six are getting pretty fine. And beyond. And Crocodile. So you see, Crocodile's heart gauge is, is, is uh, already down the whole bar. says, where on the whammon is the back? <laughs> um, okay, bite. Oh, we have scary face unlocks. That's no good. Okay, we'll double down on Mischievous, because Mischievous is actually fairly bulky. Uh, and we're much more afraid of it than we are of Six of Goon. <laughs> Especially if it does that. That will really ruin our day, potentially. Uh, worth noting, if I ever do a uh, Gale of Darkness run, is that the Shadow Rush mechanics in this are very different to the Shadow Move mechanics in Gale of Darkness. Oh, he used Tickle! <laughs> he gave us a little Tickle! That will actually be slightly annoying, because that makes our Shadow Rush worse. Uh, although it will save us a little bit of harm if we hit ourselves in confusion, so... Well, that's why we don't like you. It's also very weird aiming to... Oh, Hyper Mode! We haven't met Hyper Mode before. It's very weird aiming to knock out the shadows. Uh... So that was a bad time to get into Hyper Mode. Uh... Hyper Mode is a special thing that Shadow Pokémon do that is both a blessing and a curse. Uh, what Hyper Mode does is it means that the Pokémon sometimes doesn't listen to you if you ask it to use a move other than Shadow Rush, for one thing, which is bad. Uh, the second thing is it massively increases the critical hit rate of Shadow Rush, specifically. Uh, and the third thing is that it uh, gives you a new way to uh, open up the heart gauge of the Pokémon. So I'm going to use Bite here, uh, because if you call a Pokémon while it's in Hyper Mode, it will exit Hyper Mode and open up some heart gauge at the same time. The slight problem is that Hyper Mode becomes more and more common as you open up that Heart Gauge. Uh, oh no, I'm Cute Charmed? Oh, I did not know you had that ability. Ow, okay. Crocodile's in pain as well. Uh, this would be a bad time to lose Pokemon. Oh, my defense has been lowered a lot by Tickle, hasn't it? I'd forgotten about that. I forgot it didn't just do attack. Okay, it's a miracle Crocodile is still alive. But Croconaut is still alive. Let's, uh... Let's, uh... <laughs> let 
Let's get you out of there. <laughs> Quickly, please. Let's see if we can more. No, this is fine. I mean, just, Flaffy's heart gauge goes down a lot more quickly, a lot less quickly than Crocodile's. Owie. Tickle again! This is really rough! Actually, as a fight. How much damage do I think a headbutt and a tackle does to Flaffy now that I'm minus one defense? I'm actually gonna switch in for Espion. I don't like this particularly, but I am gonna switch in. Because, uh, those tickles really kind of add up sometimes. Not a move you think of as being particularly potent, but. Oh my god, Umbreon is being useless as well! Ow. Espion is not the tankiest. Okay, Growl is fine. We're, we're really chill about Growl. Let's get that Skitty off the table so our Brown can actually move. Okay, that that was more punishing than I wanted it to be. Partly because of the whole tickle thing that I, I let I let the tickle situation get away from me a bit. Uh Zoom Zagoon should not survive long enough to do anything with that tickle. So that's fine. But uh yeah, a rough second fight in Dueling Square. <laughs> The experience and money, however, will be well worth it. As will the uh, hot gauge progress, even though that's going to be really rough later on. Who says you might say being tickled increases your attack? I'll test that. I'll test it out next time I see you. <laughs> that was easy for you, loser. That snapped me out of my hyper state. Did you know if Pokemon goes into hyper mode, call its name, its head will snap back into reality. Oop! There will go gravity. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. it, you're, it's fine, it's fine. You're fine, Boom Boom. I also like that she covers her ear because of how loud the motorbike engine is when we're traveling. <laughs> like, we go everywhere by motorbike and she hates the sound of my motorbike. I know it's a little bit boring to do a heal and a save after every single fight, but uh, it's a punishing game. We've just seen that it can be a really punishing game against relatively run-of-the-mill normal trainers. You also despise the noise of motorbikes? I mean, it's not an unreasonable thing to, to dislike, by any stretch of the imagination. Anyway, yeah, I do want to wipe out Dueling Square. Ideally, I'll do it before the end of the stream. I don't know if we will have time. Uh, who have we got next? I'm actually tempted to do... Ryder Nova next, just because... Uh, I'm gonna switch... Are we gonna switch you out? Yeah, just because... um. That way I've got both of the people who are identical out of the way. <laughs> so if I come back next time I don't have to look up which one's which again.
You know what? Let's... Let's go crazy. Let's do a double shadow lead. That really is crazy. This is Jill Square, where even crying kids know they'd better shut up. This is where roughnecks gather. And also, saints. So how about it? Would you like to battle? Yes. Let's have it out. I also, I like the, the up close details on his, uh, his lapel. I think they're quite cool. Anyway, this is a Shadow Noctowl. I'd forgotten that there was a possibility of him leading with Noctel, uh, because all of these trainers, I think all trainers in the game that have multiple Pokémon, maybe not all all, but uh, they they have various different possibilities for what order they send them out to. It's not a guarantee which one comes first. So that Shadow Noctel could be a problem. We will have to see. Oh! Okay, Hypnosis is scary, but a risk, and luckily that risk didn't pay off for them this time. Okay, safeguard is pretty chill. I'm not really expecting, like, unless they proc the static on Flaffy. Oh, a critical hit! It's nice. Okay. So Noctowl should be going down fairly soon then. That's really handy. This game has free awakening? Yes, indeed. Do I want to switch Flaffy out, actually, to get some experience on... Because you've got the main benefit already of, of being in the battle. So maybe I'll switch you out with the SBR. Shadow Rush take down Noctowl. Oh, Reflect. Oh no, that's... Annoying. I might not kill Noctel this turn. Okay, no, we, we just about killed Noctel this turn. But yeah, Flaffy is nowhere near as tanky as Croconaw, so getting Flaffy off the field early isn't a bad thing. Getting Espeon out on a turn when there's only one enemy Pokemon attacking as well, not a bad thing. Owie. 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 Uh, between these two, they should take down either of them fairly trivially. Wingull is probably the bigger threat of the two. <clears throat> Ladybird, as much as I love Ladybird to pieces, it's not good. Like, I adore Ladybird, one of my favourite bug types, as is Ladian. Or Ladeen, as, as I always used to pronounce it as a child. But uh, not not good, unfortunately. Very unfortunately. I'd love to see a Mega Ladeen and a Mega Ariados. Uh... Yeah, okay, you can confusion that. Crocodile, you switch out from Umbreon, so Umbreon gets a little bit of XP. Imagine how naff your party has to be for me to be the biggest threat on it. Well, it's the biggest threat out of Wingull and Ladybar. The Shadow Noctowl was by far the biggest threat of the team. Based on level and also being a Shadow Pokémon. You know, with, a, with luck, Hypnosis can nerf, like, nerf an entire team on its own. Boop. Again, not that big a deal, yeah. Right then, I like Gastal, here's a useful tip. If Pokemon goes into hyper mode, its attacks become more likely to be critical hits. What a surprise! Uh, did we take very much damage there? We did not take very much damage there. I might be okay to take on another one without a heal. Uh, who have we got? Uh. Rider Lieber, not great for Croconaw, but should be a very easy win for Espeon. Okay. 
Hi there. If you try talking to anyone in your square, there's only one answer. <laughs> Skip him and Oddish. That's the ideal lead set, because it means we can switch Crocodile in with Impunity once they're both gone. Oh, not with Impunity, Impunity, but with less danger. And yes, this is the Shadow Skip Bloom. Jump off another Pokemon I adore from Gen 2. Uh, another Pokemon that we won't be uh, seeing join our party today. <laughs> boom, boom. Oh, yeah, Skip Bloom! Actually, moderately tanky. And with Meg Drain as well, it's gonna be a, a pain to defeat. Oh wow, okay. Maybe not so physically bulky. Oh, okay. Sleep powder, luckily, that's a lucky miss. Skipling down. Skipling, I think, the main threat out of the two. Dust Ox. Might have some annoying status moves. I'm not anticipating it being a problem offensively. Oh, well, especially not if I critical hit it. Although, that's a hell of a lot of recoil damage. Uh, acid is fine. Acid is not so strong. Oh, critical acid even isn't very strong. Uh, if it lowers my defense, it'll be annoying. No, okay, we're fine. Right, Fluffy, you tag out. Set so no up Umbreon. Espeon, take care of the Oddish. Just cycling through everyone, making sure everyone gets like a bit of XP. Uh, all our shadows get sent out to get their uh, heart, book, heart gauge down. Because we're, we're in a sort of a balancing act. Until we unlock the ability to make our shadow Pokemon not shadow Pokemon anymore, we have to delicately balance the fact that Espeon and Umbreon are the only ones who can gain levels versus the fact that we want to get those heart gauges down to unlock new moves uh, and to get them not Shadow Pokemon anymore. Now Umbreon, we need to swap out the Croconaw. And then Espeon, it should be pretty trivial for you to take care of this Dustox. Did ride a lever. I had to lose. Yep, yes you did. We got some money for winning, but I keep accidentally skipping past. That was an incredible battle. I simply love strong guys. That's L O V E. If you ever get the urge to battle with me again, I'll always be here for you, honey. Right, how are we doing help wise? Fluffy's taken a bit of a hit. Seeing as I want to send Fluffy out more, I think we are gonna go heal that off. Uh, we've not got too many dual square fights left. I think it's just two dual square fights left, and that'll probably be where I end the stream. Madam, <laughs> we are like 12. Well, are we? Again, like, we've had... Like, some people call us children, but we, we were a successful criminal for some while. Long enough that we managed to be, like, the top criminal in our organization apart from the guy in charge. So, you know... We can't be that young. <clears throat> uh, we're old enough to drive a motorbike. He's <laughs> much younger than her for sure. That's true. That's true. But yeah, the, this was the first Pokemon game to be like a little more, a little more mature in its themes. Like Pokemon attack people, people get kidnapped, put in a bag. And people, like, openly flirt? Did I just save the... I think I did, but I'm gonna save again just to be sure. Gen 2, the ultimate champion of the world is 11. That's true. <laughs> I 
Oh, apparently Bob C says about 17. There we go. So maybe not an adult adult, but above the age of consent. Maybe that doesn't make it better per se, but... Okay, uh, who's these last two? Uh, we've got Bandana Guy with two water types. And then the guy after has sort of a little bit of a mix. Nothing that should be too problematic. But, given the mix of the party, I'm going to want to start with Flareon Croconaw. I don't know why I just said Flareon. A, it's Flareon, and B, it's Flaffy. Um, <laughs> Uh, I was wrong on two fronts there. You understand that that falls on the umbrella basically the world. <laughs> okay, I see. Um. Yeah. I want to start with this because of your two water types. And he only has two Pokemon this guy. Bandana Guy Divil. <laughs> Not the best name to be given by your parents, but there we go. Uh, yeah, one of them is a Quagsire. We don't like for Flappy. We like not having a ground type on the field. So we're sending Flappy out at the start and then putting it away in the middle. Uh, actually, I don't know. Are they... Okay, the genders of these Pokemon. The genders of enemy Pokemon are fixed apart from Shadow Pokemon, which is nice and interesting. So it's not a guarantee to always have a male Flappy. Call him Diffy for short. Uh, meanwhile, that Quagsire is going to be pretty tanky, so let's try and get it down. Okay, Hyper Mode! Honestly, I might leave you in Hyper Mode for a turn, just to get that hopeful critical hit. Uh, Amnesia is annoying, given I've just sent out Espeon, but not the end of the world. Uh, with that on the field. Gonna be, gonna be with you in just a sec, guys. I'm looking up Quagsire's stats to see whether it's worth using Return or Confusion. Oh, well, no. Quagsire's special defense is way worse than its regular defense by default, so yeah. Use, uh... Actually, maybe even use Helping Hand, to be honest. If I'm gonna get a crit, which is likely, then bonus damage on the crits. Quags has a chunk it anyway. Yeah, yeah, he is. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, minus defense on Espeon isn't great. Well, surf is also not great, but at least it's not a physical attack. Ow, how much does that hurt? Mm, a bit. It doesn't hurt Croconaw very much, which is why we kept Croconaw out. Uh... I think we're gonna go same again. I think we're gonna go same again. Rick hasn't seen the bad to you in this game. It's not terrible. It's enough that it could knock out the Shadow Pokemon you're trying to catch, Grumble Grumble, but it's not terrible. I, f I don't know if it does actually get worse in later games or if it just feels worse. Um, right, Quagsire down. It, it kind of... it feels wrong knocking out all these Shadow Pokemon. I don't think about it and then I start thinking about it. Okay, Espeon's now minus two defense, needs to get off the field. Uh, Espeon, you're coming back. Umbreon needs to go out. Croconaw, you need a call to get you out of hyper mode. Though we're just doing nothing for a turn. <laughs> That's the other thing with Colosseum, is sometimes you do just have turns where you do nothing. Gratch, okay. Good job! Oh, I was about to say it's a good job we got Espeon out of there. Espeon wasn't the target anyway. Finish up guys between an 8 and a 16 across the series. 
Fair enough. I think some of the moves, like the really strong ones, like Double Edge, might go as high as like a third or a quarter. But yeah. Oh wow. Shadow Rush, pretty hefty. Croconaut's health looking less hefty. Sadduck's down though. Devil is down. <clears throat> Four hundred and eighty Poké Dollars. You're way tough, we've got a battle again. Maybe we shall. Who's the last person? Uh, the Roller Boy. Okay, you've actually got four Pokémon. I might... I might want Croconaw slightly more healed up than things. So as, as painful as it is, we are just one more time going back to Fennec City. We're going to do this last fight and then we're going to call it a stream. Uh, so if you have people you're thinking, oh, they could do with a raid and they're live right now, do start thinking about that. But yeah, Nuzlocke, no, no chances taken, please. I know we're on stream and stuff, but uh, no, no chances taken, please. It is definitely an easier balancing act, only having the four. Um, I'm not saying it's good that we didn't catch Makuhita, but... It makes the juggling slightly less bad. Okay. Uh, who do I want up front with this? Probably two Shadow Leads again, actually. Uh, Fluffy might have unlocked a new move. I didn't notice it last battle, but they, they might might happen at the start of this one. Battle, battle, so much fun! Pokémon battles for everyone! Battles bring me so much joy! Let's get started, little boy! Roller Boy Lon. I love that this is a class of, of trainers, just people with roller skates on. And I love the spin they do. Secret trainer hiding in the shadows, hiding behind a large lump of concrete. Also, while we're here, because I haven't actually mentioned it yet, take a moment to admire the, the like custom battle scenes that they made for the game that look really good and are way better than the custom battle environments for any battles except like gym leaders in any of the home console games. Uh, and because this is not even just the town, this is, you know, this is all the assets from the town but shuffled about to make room for the battle. This is its own custom environment. They couldn't bother be able to do that for Scarlet and Violet, now could they? Uh, right, this is a, a fine lead. Oh, we got a new move and it's Thunder Wave. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Almost might still be worth using, but I think not quite. Uh, Slugma's the real threat in his party, so I'm going to try and take down Slugma. Oh, if we can get a turn one Slugma kill, that would be great. Nope, we got a Hyper Mode instead, which is its own, its own good thing. That's why Slugma is the main thing in this party. Oh my god, that hurt a lot! Jesus Christ! Okay. Right. Um. Blaffy is in peril. Now. If Cro if Croconaw could consistently knock out Slugma. I would call Flappy right now. However, 
if Croconaw uses Shadow Rush, there's a chance of it going into hyper mode and not doing anything. So. Croconaw is unfortunately. So, uh, Fluffy is unfortunately not going to get called. Fluffy's going to stay off the field. Or it's going to come off the field. Umbreon will be do a lot better job of tanking a flamethrower if there is one headed its way. Yeah, that. That. Could actually have killed Flappy. <laughs> Would have killed Flappy. <laughs> oh, burns? That's not good. Especially as I can't synchronize burn. Um, water gun to soothe my burn. Um, this isn't amazing, but I'm fairly sure Umbreon can take another round of whatever's coming, so we're not going to do anything about it just yet. I'm going to call Croconaw again. And you can see Croconaw's heart gate is already almost empty. Okay, well, thankfully the Slugma is down. The, the choice, the real choice for which Shadow Pokemon to go for here, for me, was basically a choice between Slugma and Flaffy. <clears throat> There's a third, like, outlier option. Um, actually, now I say that there was a third outlier option. Give me one second. Because there might actually have been a fourth. Because I've got my guide of where people all, all are. No, okay. There were, there, yeah, it was it was basically a straight up choice between Flaffy and Slugma, with Mischievous as like a distant fourth. The the surprise option we haven't seen yet. The the, the sort of the wild cards we haven't seen yet, so I won't spoil what that is. Um that's not what I said, Boom Boom! I said Water Gun to soothe my burn. <laughs> uh, anyway, we can get... I was gonna say we can get Crocon off the field. I'm more inclined almost to get Umbreon off the field, actually, at this rate. Oh my god, we've got Bite! That's so good. Uh, we don't risk going into Hyper Mode when we Bite. It's the main thing. I want Espeon out. Let's get Espeon out. I could even try and get Flappy out, but I don't know if that's a good idea. Let's just pretend you made a funny Shakespeare joke. It wasn't supposed to be a Shakespeare joke! <laughs> uh, yeah, Ignibuff. Uh, this is pre fairy, so doesn't resist my bite attack, which would be good. Nom. The cereal remains not very harmful with Water Gun. Uh, Inky Buff has Charm. I think that's only attack, right? Yeah, it's fine. I don't care about that. Might know Metronome, which is why I'm sort of thinking get Inky Buff off the field first. Just because Metronome can ruin anyone's day at any given time for no reason. <clears throat> and Swab Blue, who would have been a fine enough Shadow Pokemon uh, if it was one. I would have not not been mad at all at getting a Shadow Altaria. Uh, Boom says, well, You're welcome to delete it if you don't want to falsely advertise more than what you have. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, just a tiny bit tankly. Tanky is old Swablu, blue, so uh, we'll knock that down first if we can. Nope. Tastes like clouds. Poor Azuril has been out from the start and just has been so ignored because of how useless it is. 
Uh, if you remember, you can't. That might be the case, I'm not sure. It's certainly a lot easier for me to do it, because I can do it from Streamlabs' UI, rather than having to do it through commands, so... Anyway, that is rolled by Lon. That is the end of uh, Dual Square, and uh, the end of our stream for today. I didn't catch his rhyme at the end, sadly. <laughs> just to sit and watch his friends die, oh my god! <laughs> uh, but yeah, I hope you have... Oh, oh sorry. <clears throat> okay, everyone, we've all had our fun. Until next week, farewell. Uh, that's not me actually signing off, that's just that's just him signing off. But yeah, I hope you all have had fun. Uh, I know I've had a blast, I love this game to pieces. Uh, we've already made some mistakes. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that we haven't. What a great way to end the stream? I know, right? Uh, but yeah, don't you guys go anywhere because we are going to send you all out on a wee little raid to bring some love and joy to the rest of Twitch. Assuming that Twitch is currently working because it really wasn't working earlier. Uh, let me see who I know who is live. Willow is live playing Baldur's Gate. Jack, you've had a lovely time. I'm so glad to hear it. Uh, who else is live? Honey is live playing Psychonauts. I did Lime Time is live playing some more Pokemon, but they're doing shiny hunting, which I must admit I find extremely boring. Uh, the other thing I can look for, of course, is to see who's playing Pokemon Colosseum, because there were some other people live with this game when I went live. It's been great. I'm glad you've had a, a, a good time as well, Siri Grimace. Thank you so much for the follow. Uh, thank you so much to Shaka as well for the follow and for the subscription. Uh, that's really lovely of you. Uh, no, okay. The only other person playing Colosseum is also doing shiny hunting. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, though. Uh, someone is playing XD, so let's send you over there. Maybe a little bit of spoilers, I guess, if you if you care about that, but I'm not going to be playing XD myself for quite a while. Uh, how do I spell your name? Uh, yeah, so there we go. Uh, Eslan, I don't know anything about Eslan, fair warning. Uh, but uh, be good. Uh, treat them wonderfully, make them just as pleased to have you as I always am, because I, I do adore all of you. Uh, and I love having you along. I adore you even more than I adore this great music that's been going on in the background <laughs> the entire time I've been doing my outro. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow at midday. I will probably be doing some stuff from the uh, the Tiny Teams Festival, which just started today. It's very exciting. Uh, so expect to see some demos, some small little games uh, made by, uh, I think it's teams of like under five, possibly people. Uh, but that's very exciting. I loved doing Tiny Teams last year. I'm so looking forward to it again. Uh, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, where I upload all of my VODs, uh, do remember to drop a like, maybe consider subscribing if you haven't done already. You can also drop a follow on my Twitch channel, like these lovely people who I had here today. Uh, round of applause for all of them as well. Uh, other than that, you can find me on quote x.com uh, at this for demise or on Mastodon at eldritch.cafe slash at this for demise. Uh, where I send out a notification every time I go live so you don't have to miss any of these in the future. Pokemon Colosseum will be back sometime next week, and I just hope you guys have a lovely night and a lovely raid. I'll see you all next time. Bye!